Committee meeting of October 23rd, 2019. Uh, the first order of business, uh, we've been doing roll calls of late, uh, so I'll do the roll call. I'm going to start with our um, ex officios, Denise Knowles. Here. Bob Megan. Here. Emily Leach. Here. Uh, our elected members, uh, Charlie George. Here. Charlie Dion. Here. Joe Desch. Here. Angela Matthews. Here. John Ordway, we know, is not able to be here tonight. Paul Cass. I think he also said last week he was not going to be here. Yes. Okay. Lynn Spring. Here. Uh, Peter Lampesis. Here. And Suzanne Hewlin. Yes, I'm here. So if <coughs> I'm not here, as Vice Chair, I am um, moderating this meeting tonight. So the next order of business are meeting minutes, a review, and approval. So there was an attachment, and then later I sent out a link with the minutes that were uh, corrected last time. We've already approved them, so that was just an FYI. With regard to uh, last week's minutes, uh, Brianna had a couple things highlighted, and I thought the folks who were responsible for those items could help clarify them, and then any other comments or questions you might have about those minutes. Well, Punk Alley should be Punk Alley. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you have it. made me laugh. <laughs> I had no idea what it was, what it was supposed so to be myself. Pump, pump Galley. Pump Galley. Where it says Pump I saw. Alley. I saw that, and I didn't have a clue what it might be. <laughs> I think we should just change the name. Yeah. <laughs> this is sort of like, nice to it. like Siri pump making Galley. guesses. Maybe <laughs> name is just that Brianna's name is not on this as the clerk, and probably should be someplace. Okay, so we can ask you yep. to do that. So, what about the the other one? Was this was it a mm -hmm. school one? So, um, yeah, there are a few co co corrections. Excuse me, in that bulleted list. Um, <clears throat> the second one, which you have highlighted, is um, correct. It should be approximately a hundred thousand of it went to the warrant articles, um, and that seventy five thousand and twenty two thousand in the next okay. three bullets. Um, and those, you know, make up that 100,000, so they're not additional. Um, and then, yeah, the rest, the last bullet is correct. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, corrections? I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes as clarified and corrected. So Second. Okay. Moved by Angela, seconded by Bob. Did you get that, Brianna? Okay. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Tonight begins our work, sort of what we've been marching towards all year with our quarterly reviews on the 2020 uh, budget. And so we have presentations tonight on the highway department budget, and our road agent, uh, George Gilmet, is here. Thank you, George. And uh, we will start with that. Now, I have. Um, and thank you for using the form. I know that that was the one that the budget committee had recommended. It didn't have expenditures, and so I took the liberty of yes. making a copy with the expenditures through quarter three. So if you don't think it's terribly confusing, I will pass this one along with the expenditures. Did you find that helpful? All right. Okay. Okay. I will note that on mine, the, the row numbers are different from the one that was handed out from George. But that's the only difference between what George emailed and Denise forwarded earlier today, is that I just added the expenditures on a column with the column percent e. expended. Yeah. Column, column E, and e F thank you. Are the new F, yes. Okay. Thank you. E was there, but it had no, it, they were all zeros. Mm -hmm. And then I added F, which had the percent expended through third quarter. So let me just, uh, let me just remind us what we're doing. So. Uh, this is the budget that I think the road agent presented to the board, mm -hmm. and is, he is presenting this to us. So it, it is because the final budget will come from us, this is our opportunity now to, to check in and ask the road agent uh, rationales, uh, any, any questions or concerns we might have on the proposed budget for 2020. We're not going to vote on this budget tonight. We're just going to uh, gather information and we'll be deliberating on the entire operating budget, of which this is just a part, at one of those uh, meetings in December. I don't know exactly which one, I don't remember. So uh, given that, George, did you want to say anything uh, to start out with? One quick question. 
Do we have the selectmen's recommendations? No. This is George presenting his budget. That's what usually happens when the department heads presenting their own budget. You will see our recommendations when we submit our entire budget. And that I agree that that's the sort of protocol that generally is followed. Mm -hmm. That way, the budget committee sees the unaltered, unalterated, unadulterated, whatever uh, concerns that the road agent or any department head has, mm -hmm. and then. Later on, either this month or early December into November, we'll see how the select board has transacted with the rogue agent and, and developed the budget. And then it would be up to the budget committee then if there are discrepancies or even if there are no discrepancies, it's up to us to determine how we want to bring forward uh, the highway department budget and, and the rest of the operating budget. All right, so given that, we, do you, George, you just want us to start by questions? No, you, you, you don't, don't have a I just want to make a point of, uh, we just realized that transfer station wasn't part of tonight, but I don't see it on the schedule at all. So we're going to have them come another night to transfer station, because um, Ed couldn't come tonight anyway, and George doesn't have it with him. So we will, it will only strictly be the highway barn. Yes, I, I, I noticed that myself. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it was just an oversight. An oversight. Everybody thinking maybe highway meant both, but you know, right. it's not there. Didn't say that. Right. So I, yeah, we we we'll we'll talk about the schedule. Yeah, yeah, when we talk about the schedule, we'll okay. uh, we'll work it out. Okay. All right. So questions, comments. I have a few. I, I do too. Yes. Do you want so, to go first? Uh, uh, I could. I, um, all right. My first one is is about the staff, the additional staff. I mean, staff are of course expensive. So I'd like to hear you talk about. Two things. Why, why are you thinking that? And also, why are we just hearing about this now and maybe not earlier in the year when we were doing, you know, budget reviews? Because you know, something would have been nice to have understood the rationale going along. But go ahead. Uh, what do you mean? I, I presented this originally as a full-time person, and I reduced it to a permanent part-time position. Because I have one part timer that I have most of the week, but I'd like to have somebody for the five days when we, when, we, when we're doing these projects. A lot of times, it's, you know, we're, we're doing projects, so we could use the extra body for either flagging or, you know, helping us with doing the, the labor part of the job. And we pay, we, we, we're paying with three people. That we don't, you know, not too many departments pay with three people. And we're trying to get a lot of stuff done with, you know, well, two and a half people, because I don't have them every day. So I would like to have, you know, to continue doing these projects. We have some sidewalks that need to be repaired, and we, you know, in town. And having the extra help to do this is still cheaper than hiring out a company to come in and do it. We saved about half the amount of money prepping the fire department parking lot ourselves. And, you know, with three guys, it takes a little longer to do things. You know, we had to jump from one truck to another and run around and get things. And I'm just trying to, you know, make our job a little bit easier and get more projects done. So that's one reason why I'd like to see another part-time, you know, person. Is this a 50% or? It says a permanent part-time, but do you have a? Uh, about 20 hours a week. Yeah. So about 50 50%? 50 so you would have, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say maybe it would be helpful for the committee to know what are the employees now. Yeah. See, I have one full-time staff member, which is Ed, who also manages the transfer station. So when it, when we're short-handed at the transfer station, Ed working at the transfer station, pulls another man away from us. Mike Spinney is a full-time firefighter in Summersworth. His schedule varies two, three days a week, you know. But he's very, you know... He's somebody we don't want to lose. He's a certified welder. We can fabricate a lot of equipment, again, saving all kinds of money. And he knows that he's very knowledgeable in operating all the equipment we have. He's been here prior to me. So I don't want to give up Mike to get another body. Is what I'm trying to do is to get somebody part-time to fill in the days that he's not available. So Mike's the other part-time guy? Correct. Okay. So this would bring you to one full-time and two part-time people, correct? correct? Okay, cool. Well, two full-time 
Yeah. 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 So, okay. so the hiring department would be two full-time people, you and Ed, although Ed has also his duties with yeah. transfer station. And right now, the part-time line, like the 2018 expenditures, have been for... And it includes the plowing people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So what you're trying to do is get another, somebody beyond Mike? Right, is that another part-timer that's available during the week, you know, to fill in the days that Mike's not around. You know, I can move them one day or another, or if we need them both when we're doing a project, then we can bring both people in. Sorry. No, no. Uh, oh, yeah. As far as, as sort of ground rules, I mean, as long as we're polite and don't like everybody speaking once, I think you just kind of yeah, no, come, no. come right in. And okay. If, if I have to hurt the cats, I okay. will. But. I'd like to talk about your raises. I know when you presented this to the select board, you didn't put in any amount because you wanted the select board to put your percentage in. That's correct. Is that correct? Yep. That's the reason why there's no raises. That's correct. So theoretically, the budget would be even more. Mm -hmm. has the, is it premature to ask the board? Is the board We're ready to pass the board at two percent? So we should just um, increase those by two percent. And they, there would be no state retirement implications for, for this, right? The part-timer? Yeah. I don't believe it has any benefits. No, no, no part-timers in the state system. Yeah. Just, just a comment I'd like to make. Um, I'm fairly familiar with what you do for work because I have the background in that. Um, my family did. And um, for the amount we're paying, I catch these guys working all the time, that they don't see us. I'm driving around all the time. They are doing stuff that hasn't been done here for 20 years, at least 10 years, because I see them doing stuff that I haven't seen since John Hines and Al Johnson were running this place. And it's all small stuff. When you mention this guy's a welder, that's a minimum of 50 bucks an hour to get somebody. If you've got a plow blade that's down, that's going to cost you 500 bucks. If this guy can do it for what we're paying him, it is damn cheap. And when it comes to some of the other things like paving sidewalks and stuff, that stuff was all put out to contract previous to this. It costs us a lot more than this part-time guy is going to get. Um, I, for one, and, and I'm pretty much most of you know a type right on some of this stuff. But when it comes to these guys, they've been doing a really good job, in my opinion. I just met you tonight, but... I've seen you guys working all all over town, so for what it's worth. It's helpful, thank you. George, I got a question. What big projects do you plan next year? Next you guys year? Are, wait, before I do that, you are doing an awesome job. Both oh, of you. Thank you. Next year we want to finish Sligo and we're gonna overlay the Woods Run development. That price is gonna be around the same kind of money we spent this year. They said 10%, probably it's like a 10% increase if oil goes up or down. That project I want to get done, we got sidewalks on Main Street that need some serious work. From, uh, we can't, uh, Locus. Locus. Well, actually, from Prospect yeah. right into town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love to see that. I mean, none sidewalks need some serious work. There's sidewalks on Locust Street by the school that need some work. So, that's all projects we want to get into. But I, I want to get these road projects finished prior to that. So, if, like this year, we had the extra money to get the fire department parking lot done. And I'm hoping we can do the same thing next year, but doing it, doing sidewalks. Question um, I haven't bought a street in a long time, but uh, still 100 bucks a foot basically to pay for the street. I don't know more than that. I, I, I'm not sure what they're using on that for that price. Uh, I put it out the bid and they just give me a you know a dollar figure. It. I don't know what the exact dollar amount is. Thank you, George. What are you using for uh, sidewalks, asphalt or concrete? We haven't. I haven't even decided that. It's something we could do either way. But the 
problem I have with cement or concrete is salt. Mm -hmm. You know, the salt eats the heck out of the concrete. So I'd, mm -hmm. I would prefer using hot uh, asphalt. I'm aware of a, a product they used over at Sunnyfield Housing Authority called Aquatite. Oh, yeah. It bonds to both asphalt and concrete. Uh, has uh, cementitious materials that do well in hot, cold expansion. Uh, something that might, we might want to look at. Yeah, like I said, these are projects I haven't even looked at into doing, but it's, you know, I want to see what so much, if we can do so much here, so I can look at a different product. Yeah, that'd be good. George, is, is the 350000 that you have on the road maintenance and resurfacing, resurfacing is, is that to cover, in your mind, uh, slow, solely the Sligo Road and Woods Road oh, project? Oh, that's all road projects. So, so when you're talking, so you're hoping that the sidewalks will fit into that as well. Some of the sidewalks, we'll, uh, we probably won't get them all done. Right. But we still have, you know, we still have road money available right now that we get some projects we're trying to finish up. So, you know, that's including the shouldering and all that stuff. We, we haven't finished the shouldering part yet. We're waiting for the truck to show up so we can get this done. So, that should be within a few weeks. Trust in the show up. So. What's your window for the weather to be able to... Oh, the, the shoulders are something we can do. Because you're not... Yeah, that's only going to be though. maybe a week or two before. If, if, you know, we're not putting no asphalt on, it's okay. just gravel. Yeah. So, with regard to telephone and cell, at, at the end of quarter three, you were at 92% of budget, but I saw that you didn't go up in your budget, so it's not a big amount, but... Did you eliminate the phone at the transfer station? Okay, that takes care of that. Thank you. Excellent. Nice work. Because, tell them why. Because, I mean, you still have access. Right. So. Right. It's good. So with the cell access, and, and we have we can we have a portable phone at at the transfer station that we can get tied into our line at the shop. Right. So it's not that they change. don't have. Yeah, yes, they don't have change. one. We're all the same phone number. Yeah. Yeah. It's a safety issue. Okay. And is the. Has the SALT contract come in? Do we feel confident that the... That price would be fine. The price went down the ship. Did you see, did you see the um, Morton's? It went you, down. You did see it, because yeah. we talked about it at the board yeah. meeting. Okay, very good. So I had a question about um, the uniforms line, because it's 45% spent now. Is the full 2000 going to be spent before the end of the year, or what? The uniform line is actually a mess. It's shared between both transfer station and so that's why I don't think that these that numbers accurate. Yeah, I I didn't know they went together either for a while, so we're gonna look at that. Just it seems sure. like a big difference. So. Yeah. I mean what was spent and what was budgeted. So I just But I think you know, see a lot of it's on the transfer station side that's already used. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not. Oh, I see. It's, it's only the highway so budget. Expensed uh, in the transfer station. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. You'll see that I reduced the vehicle maintenance by five thousand dollars because most of our fleet is newer and been a lot less maintenance. I mean, the truck that we just are getting rid of is one that's been, was costing a lot of money to maintain. So now most of your vehicles are up to date. And uh, what we did this year is we undercoated everything with oil undercoating to stop the salt from eating away at these so we can buy some time with them. So the, in the, um, the second sweeping downtown that's here, it's my line 21. I don't know what it was mm -hmm. originally. So that's not, John said something at the last meeting that they thought, one of the things that he thought we were going to have to do twice a year, they, they I think we have to do one more year. We have to do the downtown where this could like forever. We have to sweep a second time. Yeah. But I think he's, he, what he's saying is right. that we may, if we have good results on both of them, then we may not have to do it twice right. a year for a while. So and, uh, this, I think next again, year we do. We can go back into where it's storm drain cleaning. We just had our storm drains cleaned. And the company is telling us we're wasting our time, so we should be doing it every other year, so we can probably reduce that line. Mm -hmm. What line is that? 24. Catch basin cleaning. Okay, yeah. So that 
was $3,500 that we won't be spending next year because our basins with the, where we stopped using sand, the basins are not getting filled up. So we, we, they were actually, we, we didn't take out, in all the storm drains in town, we took out about 60 yards of material. But this is still storm water related, so correct? Water. Correct. So are we sure that we can... As long as the basins are not over half full, we can do it. Do we're only, we're getting two inches out of these basins. Okay. So it's... And if we swing twice a year, that, that eliminates some of the stuff right. that I guess yeah, exactly. would be going. Exactly. Right, so right. using strictly salt. I just want to make sure we follow all this, yeah. the rules. Using there. strictly yeah. salt has eliminated the storm drain, so catch basins from being filled up. Yeah. Is can we consider removing that, reducing it by thirty five hundred? I don't expect to be bringing them in next year, so it's going to have to be on every other year. We're going to have to put a schedule out there that you know we're going to have to do them every other year. Yeah, but well, we could leave the line there with zero dollars budgeted. No, I just had a quick question on the sand. I'm assuming in the cases of bad ice storms, you're still using sand with the ice, no mm -hmm. sand at all. Very, very seldom we use salt, sand. Okay. The salt is working fine for us. We, you know, I mean, when you get down to lower temperatures, you have to apply a little bit more, but it's, we're getting the job done. But, but sand is still going down because people are using it in their own properties and stuff. On their still properties, go, uh, but, right, yeah. so I mean, you're going to, but if they're on a main road near our... We're not spreading sand all over we're the road. We're not spreading, We're not right. spreading sand on sidewalks, so none of that stuff's going down the storm drains. But people could be putting it on the sidewalks to get to their vehicle or something. I mean, you're going to have some, but you're not going to right. have anywhere near what you used to have. But it's not right. going to go away completely. But there's two years in a row that we've done the storm drains, and we're not getting two or three inches of sand out of them, it, or material out of them. And the, the guy keeps saying, he says, your storm drains are in excellent shape. I mean, there's some storm drains that need to be repaired or stuff like that, but there's no... They're not pulling sediment out of anything, so it's not worth having companies come and spend that kind of money every year to clean them out. So if we do it every other year, I think we'll be in fine shape. So do you want to revise that number? I would leave a dollar in there just to give you the opportunity to, yeah, I mean, have next, to do something. Next year we're gonna, next year we right won't to have, spend. You know, this year we won't put anything, next year we're going to have to put the 3500 back. That would be okay. Yeah, but I would make the one dollar in there. Right, just to keep the line on it. Right, right. So is that what you're recommending? Yep. All right. So we're going to remove the thirty-five, make it a dollar for two thousand twenty. Twenty-one will be put in there. Thirty-five hundred back in. Okay. So I had a question also, George, about line striping. You're at fifty percent of the budget, but you're also projecting more next year than this year. So you haven't okay. spent that budget. Is it? Is there some? What we did this year is they, we didn't have any line. We didn't have any dollars in there for line scraping per se. The yellow lines. We bought our paint machine, and we're doing our own scraping on the parking and stuff downtown. So all we're going to do now is buy paint to do the striping. So that's going to eliminate that line. The line striping, we're going to continue to do every year now with the yellow lines. Mm -hmm. Instead of skipping like we did a couple of years that weren't done, this year we ended up doing them because the police department and the safety committee recommended the lines be painted. Like bare roads, you know, the certain roads in town. There's not many roads in town. So we came up with <coughs> to get that done this year. That line is just going to be for the yellow line striping. The paint now is going to be bought under supplies, so it's not going to be a separate line. So the long lines you're contracting. Long out, lines are the only things we contract. contract. Okay, that's the <coughs> okay. long lines. Which is the, the line, the yellow line. The line lines. like on bare road. Those lines. Okay. That's that the long lines where we have to hire out. We can't do that with a paint striking machine. Yeah. <coughs> that's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How about tree maintenance, George? Uh, tree maintenance. Have you? Um, it's not spent yet. We're scheduled. We're going to use that whole amount, and first week in January, again, it schedule is right out there, and we have to use a crane on a couple of them because we have that big tree, there's a big tree at the corner of General Sullivan that's in pretty rough shape that's got to come down, and that's got to be done with a crane, and we have two on a right away that keep falling on people's property that they got to take down before it comes down on a house. Mm -hmm. 
So, so you will. So you're going to you're going to encumber the this year's funds for for the yeah. Okay. yeah. At that point, because I, I know that the dead trees in town had we were there was a pretty significant number of them. Once you do this work in January, what, how would you say the, the situation is like in the town? I I've got to speak with Ed. I, I know we've got he's looking. He's got about a day and a half worth of work, but we've got some other trees that we just found that need to come down. So then, then I'm going to have, we're going to do another survey around town and have him tell me what trees are, because I'm not an arborist. Sure. And uh, we'll, we'll look at some more trees that have to come down. Might you, is there any opportunity uh, to think that maybe the 7500 for next year would need the whole amount? Or once you have talked to the arborist? Or? I, I, I honestly do. Not sure of the amount of trees that need to come down. So, okay. so we're going to leave this. You're suggesting we leave the 7,500 in there. Yeah, I mean, because it's not getting any cheaper to have them coming to the tree. So, how many trees did we lose during the storm? Uh, last there week? was a couple on lots of branch down on Bay Road, I believe. Uh, and then we lost a big tree on Foundry Street. Yeah. That, oh, wow. Clement had a lot of activity too. But a lot of this stuff's not falling from our property. It's coming from that further back off the road. And it's taking a power line though. You know, some of these pine trees aren't, you know, they're tall, so. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones closer to the road there is there is one on I mean, it still actually isn't on our, on the town property. Uh, on I got a complaint on Watson Road that they want a tree down, but I don't believe it's ours to take care of, so. Where? Watson Lane. Where's that? No, uh, where Wa Raul and Watson used to be there. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Any tree that's uh, near a power line, is that public service? Was that ever so? Ever so, it's usually, they, they maintain it pretty much, you know, they're cutting back as far as they can. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, the, the ones that on our property, like, there's five trees or six trees across the street from the fire station in the park that's ours. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to have, Mike's going to cut them down. So we're not going to have to have a tree company come in and take them down. Mike's, again, that's another value of having him on, you know, he's capable of cutting trees and he even climbs to cut. So, but we haven't we needed to use that option. But there's places he won't cut trees, the natural power lines and stuff, where we don't have the equipment to do it. So. Mm -hmm. But we can drop the trees over there, so that's eliminating the cost of having an urban tree or anybody else going to cut them. So. But there's five trees in that park that are dead that they're going to be coming down soon. We can get in there without damaging the lawns and stuff. Can you talk to us about signs? I, I do remember that a road agent prior to you told us that our signs are not. Um, Compliant with federal whatever. I brought that up. Yeah. And so where 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 are we now with stop signs? Have all been changed. Okay. Uh, the dead end signs. A lot of them were beyond being able to read, so we changed them out. Uh, there's not a lot of money in for signs. We're going to be adding some speed limit signs and stuff too that's okay. coming up. Mm -hmm. So. So we, we, we're, would you say we're mostly compliant? I, I guess I... All the stop signs, that, all the signs that, I, the stop signs are now to reflect the stop okay. signs, are, they are in compliance. Okay. All right, so we're talking about additional signs that we might need, the dead end signs. Dead end signs and speed limits. No trucks and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions, comments for George? George, we're going to be talking about the CIP, and I'm hoping that uh, you can uh, talk to the, the committee about your plans of, about equipment. Because, uh, well, I, I'll hand out the, the CIP if people need copies. But, you know, we, when, you, when you met with the CIP, you mentioned that, well, you know, 
instead of replacing the back. Okay. Okay. So, well, what you what you will see in the highway department, and I'm sorry that the uh, the left hand side is locked off, but I printed these quickly this afternoon and had a chance to do it. So, the highway department is sort of like the second section from the bottom, and so. Well, maybe you could just talk. So what we have is the articulating loader, and we've taken out a replacement for the for the backhoe. It's there with zero dollars, and we've got a mini excavator. So that was based on what you were. We had talked about going that route. Yes. But mini excavator. The backhoe has more uses than mini excavator. So we decided to stay with the backhoe because we can take that anywhere we want. The mini excavator was used more in ditching and stuff like that. Uh, and it's actually be cheaper to rent a machine for three or four weeks in the summer to do dish work instead of replacing the backhoe when they will keep the backhoe and keep that down, you know, put down the road. All right. The articulating loader is actually a sidewalk machine. We cannot maintain our sidewalks with the with the equipment we have. We cannot salt our sidewalks with our back with our skid steer. And the skid steer is actually too wide for ninety percent of our sidewalks, so we can't maintain our sidewalk properly. My thought was to move the skid steer into the uh, transfer station because that's where it's ninety percent of the time, and get a machine to do the sidewalks. So that's for plowing, plowing, and, it, and it'll also have a sander on it. And that articulating loader will be more beneficial than the skid steer is because we can drive that over the road mm -hmm. to use it for other projects. So George, what we did so what we did based on the conversation we had in August about the or July, understandably thoughts change and everything. So we zeroed out the backhoe replacement, which was item number six on the highway department, and uh, we've got the articulating lo loader, which is still on the uh, agenda. And so what you're saying is the mini excavator, we should put that money back in the backhoe. Is that sufficient dollars? You probably off the top of your head. Couldn't really say, but so we've got eighty thousand. Yeah, that yeah, we go take that mini excavator money and leave it in backhoe replacement. But that backhoe has got lots of life in it. That that backhoe is you know it's not used every day, yeah. so it's not a machine that you're going to swap out in. I don't know what the plan was to replace that originally. I know when I started they wanted to re you, you were talking about replacing it because it was not. Not supposed to be. Yes, that that was a feeling from some people. Right. And I was happy to have an ally in that uh, uh, dis discussion. So, so thank I you mean, for that. that. Machine, that machine is fine. As long as we maintain that machine, we'll get a lot of life out of that machine. This excavator will relieve a lot of the, you know, so we can extend the life of that machine what by thing? using the wooden mini loader. Okay. Does it have a 10 year lifespan? 10? The backhoe, back. at the amount that we use it, you could probably get 20 years out of it. Yay. But well, that's not, what, that's you know, all I, I wanted to know. I cannot guarantee anything. Oh, absolutely. No, no, there are no guarantees. None of this. It, but it's a plan, right? It's a plan based <laughs> on our best it's guess. Not, I would not be replacing a backhoe in this town with the amount we use it in 10 years. All right. Is what I'm saying. So that effectively takes $80,000 off the CIP for the next 10 years. So that's a nice thing. Thank you. All right. Um, However, I am still adamant about getting a sidewalk machine that can do the job. It, that's the articulating loader. Yeah. Do you, do you, while he's here, can you describe to the uh, to the committee if there are people who don't know what the articulating loader does and uh, that might be helpful? There, a lot of towns have sidewalk specific machines. Right. They're one hundred and sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. This articulating <coughs> loader is a mini loader that fits on our sidewalks that we can put it all our attachments, sweeper, a, you know, snow blower, the bucket. That truck, that little loader can actually fill a full-size dump truck. Some of the housing authority has this same machine they use to do all their property sidewalks. And uh, I used the ingrail work when I was over there because that was our $160,000 machine was down and out. And uh, that machine was very capable of handling the amount of sidewalks there is in Barrow, which is probably three times what we have here. Uh, the good thing about that machine is it fits on our sidewalks. It's not, you know, with the skid steer right now, it's almost six feet wide. We're falling off the sidewalks, when, you know, off the curb and when we're trying to plow the sidewalk. We can't go up a lot of our sidewalks. The sidewalks are normally five feet wide. The snowblower on it's five feet. 
we could put a narrower set of tires in it to get it down to that. But it's, we still keep falling off the sidewalk because it's five and a half feet. We have non standard. And we cannot sand with this. It's, there's no sander on it or anything like that. This machine that I'm looking at has a sander, the, you know, the bucket that we can, and a snow blower. And it, swivel, it, it swivels. It's not, you know, we're not skidding around corners and stuff. And it fits on the sidewalk. But you still keep the skid steer to the value? The skid steer is, you're not going to get anything for it. Or in a trade. Yeah. My recommendation is to keep it over in the transfer station. Okay. They can use it to maintain the transfer station during storms or wear out because there are guys that operate it over there. Uh, and they use it all the time now, especially for bailing and stuff like that. We use it for, you know, when we're moving our bales after we put in, make the bales of plastic and tin and everything else. So the skid steer is getting plenty of use. And I recommend that we keep hold on to it because we're not going to get anything for it. And the other thought of going away from the going to the mini excavator was I talked about trading that back over and they said you're losing more money than it's because the machine's too new. So to trade it and towards something else would be a, a loss of you know dollar. That's why I decided to go away from that and getting a mini excavator. The amount of mini excavator, you know, we rented for a month last year to get things done down the slide over. And that's what you have that new line for 6000 right? Correct. It's, it's to rent that very equipment that you feel we just need. For now, there's certain things that we need, like we're renting a post all day that we're putting it right now because we're putting the uh, guardrail down, down on our slide over. So it's, you know, it's stuff that we, those things we don't need to buy. You know, we mm -hmm. can rent them. We're renting that machine for $109 a day, so. Mm -hmm. Do you know ballpark figure how many hours were on the back row? 1,600 maybe? Oh, so it's real. Yeah. yeah, it's only four years old, five years old. The thing's brand new. Yeah. When I started, the grading bucket was still on a pallet game on, so. <laughs> <laughs> so there. George, how do you plow Main Street? That's really Main pretty. Street or yeah. Front Street? Main Street. I don't. Okay. Okay. State desk. Oh, you mean sidewalk? Yeah, sidewalk. Uh, the skid if fits further up Main Street, fine. But down here, it's big, you know, it digs yeah, up. I know, it's very it, narrow. It makes a big mess of what's, you know. And again, that's why the sidewalks need to be repaired and brought up the side. And, and no, you don't plow the roads. <laughs> <laughs> right, we were talking about plowing. And, yeah. Yeah, but, no. Sorry, I didn't. Oh, it's just that, oh, in the weeds question. It's not really a budget question. Um, in the winter, we're forced off that sidewalk to walk in the street because it's so icy. If the sidewalk is repaired, will that address the icing problem? Well, we still have to be able to treat the sidewalks. That's why we're looking to have, you know, we can do it with the sidewalk machine. Mm -hmm. We don't treat the sidewalks. I don't think we don't have the capability unless we right. walk, get out of the truck and walk and save the sidewalks or uh, what have you, you know. What do the children do when they're walking to the, the school? Or what? It's hazardous. It's, it's, it's a safety issue. Would, they, would this help? Would all yeah, of this absolutely. Right now, most of them are walking in the street. I see them every morning. Mm -hmm. okay. so, I mean, yeah, I again, this is not going to happen for this winter. Yeah. Right, right, right. Not the same. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So forward to the solution. Suzanne, so I understand this sheet here. So, uh, Bob, George is saying the articulating is going to be 85000 there's already 50000 in the SIP reserve fund. That's already been set aside, I guess, for prior budgets and stuff. And uh, then yes, I, I, and I thought I would go through all of that, but let's okay, answer no, then, let, let's, I, let's answer I think, your question. Okay, so we're, we're saying that, I'm assuming that next year there's going to be a warrant article for 35000 or 356 There will be a warrant article for, uh, if, this, if the board uh, goes along with this, There'll be a war, war an article that says to purchase, to raise and appropriate $85,695. So it's the full amount for the purchase of an articulating loader mm -hmm. with the full yeah. amount coming from the CIP. Right. Okay. That's, you have some, that, that kind of language. Mm -hmm. Oh, that confuses me. Because they're in two separate columns on the right end of this column. Total for a 10 year period, 35000 and total, well, that's from, the total CIP. from the CIP. The, the 35 for 2020, yeah. the proposal would be to do a warrant article for 35, 695. Right. Purchase it in 2020, 
with 50,000 of it coming from the reserve fund and 35 and change coming from the water. I'll go through it too when we actually are. Are there other questions for George with you know the, the ten year plan or the road plan or the rest of the operating budget that he's recommending? I did just for just for information. I have um, I already had it. it. It's the amount of money that we've spent on road maintenance over the last ten years. Uh, no, since 1991. So it's longer than that. And um, if you look at it, I did this last February, so it, the it says that 2019 represents the proposed amount, but it became the actual authorized or appropriate full appropriation. I have a quick question on the sidewalks. So yeah. if you repair them, are you making them wide enough? That I make five feet. That's the standard. You will be making them five feet? There's it could be. If we're, going to make, if we're going to build a sidewalk, we might as well make it standard. So then could we already use the machine that we have that they're going to make the sidewalks bigger? Or no, that's no, that machine is five, oh, it's over five feet wide. Okay, so that's even if they're regular right. size, that's still too big. Right. This other machine is four feet wide. If we have to make a second path, it's not a big deal. It's, mm -hmm. But it fits on the sidewalks and we're not falling off. Locust Street is one of the hardest sidewalks I have to plow because of the way the curb is made. And, you know, you're coming up off a driver on an angle, you're falling off, trying to get up the hill, you can't make the hill. You know, we, we fight, we're fighting it all the time, but... Okay. And is, is line one that replaced 2019 freight line, is that the placeholder, or... That's, that's the, the new truck, truck that's coming in. It's oh, not that's here, yeah, yeah. Okay. The truck, yeah, it's, in, it's being built right now. Assembled, not built. Well, they're they putting the they back end. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, why don't we just go through the detail, too, as long as uh, George is here, in case there are, there are questions. So, we're going to look at the highway department individual lines. And the first one is to replace the 2019 freight liner. That's the one that's on its way here. Correct. So it's just a placeholder. And I'll say, I say in the executive summary, you know, that it would be nice to find a way to manage that. But, but anyway, it's it's a placeholder. We don't anticipate filling it in over, across the next 10 years with any funding. The articulating loader is uh, cost 85,000, oh, close to 86,000. We've talked about that. The uh, replace the the dump truck. This is a truck that, uh, is this the biggest one? The biggest one. And is this the one where you're saying we can replace it with a smaller one or are we replacing this one with a bigger, with the same size? Right now, the new truck is actually smaller in size and able to do any road that we have in town. Most of the roads are owned are not large. So, the, I mean, the idea is to be able to keep it. To have a big dump truck to be able to haul gravel. I mean, if, but if you had two small ones, you'd do it with two trucks. You could save money by buying a second truck like we're buying right now, with the sand and everything built into it, and it'd still be able to maintain our roads. It's got, you know, this plow is a foot narrower on a new truck than it is on a bigger truck. <coughs> Most of the time, when he's got the wing and the plow down on 90% of our roads, he's on the other lane anyway. So the new truck would be able to do the same job as that big truck, and it's probably $30,000 less. So this then price we, then is for a similar truck to the one we just bought? Correct. Okay. And scheduled for 2027. That's how to, how to read that. Uh, replacing uh, the Ford 550, scheduled for 2028. Uh, new system boiler. Um, Scheduled for 2027. There is a non-standard boiler in that building, I believe. No, it's a, um, it was a residential boiler. Um, that, that, not true. I would not rush. Like I said when I started, you know, there was there was talk about replacing that boiler, and that boiler is working fine in that building. It's got radiant heat in the floor, so it's not working half as hard as most boilers anyway. So. The boiler that's on the wall is a gas-fired boiler, and the life expectancy of that is you got to be 20 years on that. So I don't. It was built in. So it's about. So we bought it in 2008. I think was what it looks like. I guess. It was built in 2008. The building, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So you got to. So 2027 is not far off. That's the correct. Yeah. Okay. The backhoe replacement. We've talked about that. We'll. Uh, that can be. I still say could be extended over life. Yeah, so that's great. And then the mini excavator, your suggestion right now is to remove it from the plan. Take it right out. We'll yeah. just keep that in the rental if we need yeah. to. 
And replacing the roof is there. Uh, you, I, I could explain it, but you could probably also explain the situation with the roof. When it's time to do the roof, we lose shingles every year. Apparently, the shingles were put on backwards. The wind takes the shingles up. So, my suggestion is when they decide to do it, is put a metal roof on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, that would be more than probably 45. But. Anyway, so that's that's those are the CIP I mean, every, items. Every windstorm, we get to pick up shingles. So. We had when I was on the board, we had a roofer come in to examine that, and he said, you know, for the amount of cost you to replace the shingles, he said it's going to be cheaper for you to hang onto this roof for whatever he said here till 2024 and to replace the shingles that come off. That was his recommendation, and he was the roofer, so. And he said, you've got a, the wrong, wrong kind of shingles, and they've been applied incorrectly. I'm not a roofer. I, I can't explain it anymore, but that is what he told me. I don't wrong, have a shingle blowing up my health. It was built before that. Yeah, wrong, <laughs> wrong kind of shingles, <laughs> and they were put on incorrectly. So. You know, when you said sand and gravel, George, I remember it. On, your, on the sand and gravel, on the operating budget, line 20. So we already expended more than this year's budget, mm -hmm. but you haven't changed it. Is that, is that still, you think it's, we're still we, pretty much okay? A lot of that was used, it's used with the road. They took it out of that line instead of the road money. It's just yeah. a... Oh, it's where the expense showed up, it's not, okay. Right. So you're fine leaving it at I the 65, okay. Thank you. Any other questions of George? George, I'll just repeat what many people have said. Uh, we are really appreciative of all the work that you and Ed do. I've, I've never heard anything other than high praise about the highway department. So we thank you for your work, and please pass that along to Ed and Mike. You know, well. I mean, if anybody has feedback for us, I mean, you know, we don't see everything that's going on. So a lot of times, you know, we've been something thrown on Facebook that, well, the highway department may not be fixing something. Well, if we don't know something's broke, it's hard to fix it. Social media sometimes can be aggravating. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm trying to do the best we can, and a little bit of help, you know, an extra body would do it to help. So, that's, you know, we are saving some significant amount of money in projects, so. And making improvements. That, that's so. the big improvement. Yeah, House Heritage Drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks lovely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. So thank you very well, much. I'm going to be doing the shoulders there too. <laughs> well, I would be happier even to see the downtown sidewalks done. I have to say. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I've been looking at the sidewalks. It, yeah. It's difficult to plow them with the snowball. We're picking up a piece of the hot top and stuff when we do it. They do need work. Yeah. I know that there wasn't a plan for sidewalks, but there's stuff that we have to be looking at. But we did have a mention in the road plan for sidewalks when we were talking about the village. But it was a question mark, and you know we were wondering if there might be grant money. So, but we had no idea how much they might cost. So, right. so having them done by the highway department, I'm sure, is going to be uh, a savings over whatever we might have contracted out for them. Okay, Suzanne, since you passed this out and while George is still yes. here, I'm looking at it and not making much of it. Can you just? Show oh yeah, so I did this. I don't know exactly what prompted me to do this last February, but but I did. So these are, are the road maintenance budgets since 1991. And uh, the, they are two different colors for some of this. And the two different colors represent, the orange represents road maintenance that was in a warrant article, mm -hmm. and the blue, the operating budget. And as you recall, you know, there was a lot of hoo-ha about this, but the select board, I guess in 2018, uh, wanted to put all of the road maintenance in one place in the operating budget. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's something we have to we have to maintain roads, and we're going to maintain them every year. And so it should, you know, there was an argument to have it just be part of the operating budget. So, so you can see that you know, starting around 2014, there have been significant investments in our roads that were different from what was happening before. So, you, you know, what is the right annual amount to be putting in to manage our roads? I, I certainly don't know. You know, I and the, the arrow just means that. You know, that bump up from 2017 to 2018 was funded in large part by the state. We got a, um, a 
a supplemental grant of almost mm -hmm. fifty thousand from that. Mm -hmm. So it, it was two hundred and seventy five that was sort of you might say the taxation. The rest is this uh, money that we got from the state. So we you know we're we're yet again uh, investing more in our roads, and that may be appropriate. Three hundred fifty thousand may be the appropriate annual investment in order to get a to carry the road situation, or maybe, maybe, ho hopefully, maybe it isn't quite this much, but we're just, we're still trying to play catch up. I, I don't really know. But I mean, you, you've got to start looking at, at roads right here in town, in the village. To get, <laughs> the roads are getting beat up pretty bad. The storm drain system has to be fixed. You know, there's a lot of work that's going to be down here in the village. So that money, like you said, the 350000 Probably not even a dent of what it would cost to do everything you want to do downtown. So, so getting caught up takes take some time. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to happen. It's something that's going to happen overnight. When we put together the town, I don't know if the town is maintaining the 10 year road plan, but when we put that together and we had a, a public hearing on it, we had people come to us and say, if you can't do our road until whatever, whatever, it's going to be gravel. It's going to turn to gravel. You know, so. It, it was just an indication to us of how difficult these decisions are uh, with regard to our roads, and um, and I, I and I'd like to see that one of the reasons that our board, the boards that I was on, liked that road plan is that it did have. So when we did their road, we put something on our plan for like you know five six years later to do. Uh, to, you know, Thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you, George. So, so that we're we're not we're not always like reclaiming, mm -hmm. you know. So that we're managing our roads in a way so that it keeps them at a certain level of of, of uh, goodness as long as we can without having to start all over again and, and, and reclaim because that gets really really expensive. But when you when you've left them to the state that like Sligo was in or Heritage was in. Uh, parts of heritage, anyway, you know, reclamation, foundry reclamation was, you know, was the only, was the way to go. So that's all. It's just data, mm -hmm. so that you can kind of see it might help Thanks. evaluate that line that's in the budget. All right. Anything else? Then let's go to the CIP. Denise and I had a moment at the meeting last week when I thought she was presenting the CIP and, and she thought I was presenting the CIP. So we we. Uh, we had a conversation, and and I am doing the presenting. And so if you recall, uh, this board authorized me, whatever the term was, to serve on the CIP committee, and I ended up becoming the chair of that committee, which had a school board representation, planning board representation, and select board representation, and our town administrators. There were five of us, and it's a it is a strategic planning document. So this group will not be voting on this per se, like, you know, we'll be voting and working on the operating budget. So it's not part of the operating budget, but it forms part of the overall uh, budget of the town. And what, what, what we will see, what this board will see, this committee, I'm sorry, will see, is that many of the items that, like the, let's just take row, if you look at the actual um, CIP, under the highway department, row uh, number two, the articulating loader. So assuming that the board does this, the select board, we'll see a warrant article that says, you know, raise an, an authorize $85,695 for the purchase of an articulating loader, the amount of which is coming from the CIP. That, if that be, is a warrant article, and we don't, we don't suggest warrant articles that come from the board or by petition, uh, all that this what this, this committee does is to either recommend or not recommend. So we'll see that articulating articulating loader warrant article, and at the meeting after the public hearing, it will be up to us to say whether we recommend that or not recommend it. And that's the only, we don't reduce the amount, we don't change the language of the warrant, we just recommend it as is or not recommend it as is. So it's in that light where we're not actually you know, we can't change some of the pieces here, but nonetheless, it provides context for what, for the whole budget of the town. And so, you know, the budget committee is usually presented with the CIP, but this is, this is the version of the CIP that the committee presented to the select board. 
So just like George gave his budget today, the select we made our recommendation to the select board, and they, when they finalize it, there may be some differences. So that's just something to keep in mind. And in order to, to uh, orient ourselves to what we're seeing, it's in large sections. So you've got general government administration, and again, I'm sorry for the locked up thing, police department, the fire department, the highway department, the transfer station, anything else? No. No, other town departments, and there isn't, there isn't anything there. And so, pardon? That last one's total, yeah. Yeah, just a total, yeah. So, <coughs> so under gross capital cost, that's how much we anticipate the item to cost. The purchase target year, I'm just going to say, <coughs> the purchase target year is when we think uh, we'll expend the funds to, to buy the item. And then you see the 10 years of the plan, 2023-2029, with the amount that it's, is suggested we set aside for that item. Now, you know, they go, you know, sometimes it's the same amount for like, you know, five years, sometimes the amounts change, and it's all a sort of a mathematical puzzle to try to keep the total CIP outlay as, you know, as, it's not flat, but not, not going like this, not, you know, to kind of keep uh, big swings out of the picture. Um, so when you see the green, the green cells, that's the year that we expect to purchase that so it goes in line with the purchase target here, but as another indication, you know, we call it that particular cell. Um, and then over on the right, you've got the total for the 10-year period, which may not be the total for the item that we're talking about, just what's going to be raised during that, expect to be raised during that 10-year period. If there are monies that we've already set aside for that in the CIP reserve fund, that's, that amount is in the next column. So when you looked at that articulating loader again under the highway department, it was an $85,700 machine, uh, but we've got $50,000 in the CIP reserve fund. Now that's not sacrosanct. You know, the board, uh, those amounts are not, uh, they weren't approved by the town. The board can move these around to, for, for things to make sense. But right now, there's 50000 that the CIP is saying CIP committee is recommending that be used against that. So if that. there was a more urgent matter, for example, that could be shifted. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, there's no, these are, are just planning figures. Nothing that get uh, authorized or voted on or anything like that. And then the next column, future years, other sources. So if there is either a grant that we know we can get for, for that item, we would put that there in that column. Or if, if we're starting to put money for something that that we think is going to take 10 years of funding, but they're only five years in the plan, then there's another five, the next five years. So that you'll see that amount there. It's just so that we can tie in so that the total funding on the right equals the gross capital cost on the left. So it's just to tie everything in together. And then um, if you look down the 2020 column, all the way to the total, which as we proposed it, is $186,895. That's the sum of all of the things that we're recommending we put money aside for in this plan. So, so if the board makes no changes, and, and they can make changes, of course, but if the board makes no changes, then what you'll see is a warrant article that says to raise and appropriate $186,895 for maybe they'll round it up, uh, put in the CIP reserve fund. I don't have the exact language, but that's what you'll see. So that's, that's what this represents. Okay, questions on the data that you're seeing? Did I hand out, I didn't hand out the summary that I gave the board when I did this. So I, I would say that the use of this document is still new-ish, you know, and so we still, in particular, we found ourselves with another big surprise this year. So we're trying to, and departments are coming on board. We're trying to make sure the departments on, are on board and telling us what their what their big outlays are, so that we can capture it in the CIP. So that's what that first paragraph says, I think. And then, then you see the little graph. This is a, a graph of what is happening over the 
the 10 years is represented in this plan here. And you see there's a big jump in the last year. And the board knows that, I mean the board, the committee knew that, and we wrote some mitigation strategies as part of this document, which if you're interested, we can go through. Uh, but our thought was, yes, it's high, but it's the very last year. There are things that can happen, and maybe some of these mitigating strategies can be put in place to, so that that jump is not as big as you see. Uh, some of the things, and I, I don't know what, how the board is going to, uh, again, we, this was our recommendation before. So, you know, the town administration police facility is, you know, the, we're, uh, we, we know that the board and the town have not really decided on this. So in order for us to do our work and present something, uh, we, we decided to, um, let's see, how can I say this? Um, assume that, that we would stay in this building for the foreseeable future. So that's what you see in this plan. And which is not sacrosanct again, right? It's not sacrosanct. But if we do, then there are in the in the, in the general government administration under the uh, there are clearly some items here that are upgrades to the building. So you see line three, I'm sorry, well line one is the boiler that uh, I think we're not doing it this year because we had it looked at by Townsend and they said that we have many more years of, of, that this boiler could perfect have life. So, so that what that means then, from a CIP point of view, is that the whatever amount we had authorized at town meeting, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, we're going to roll it over for another year. Yeah, so it won't be spent. Sure. So right. it can it can be used then to fund fund that whenever. Whatever the board thinks yeah. it's going to be. So, so we're going to just uh, put it in a, uh, what's the word, uh, we're going to put a, what's the amount? Whatever it was, I don't know. It's 20 or 30,000. You don't have to do anything. It's there in the CIP. If right. you're not taking it out, it stays there. Right, but so we're deferring it to next year just to make sure that we're getting through another winter and it's still doing so what they say it is going to do. We're not, go ahead. Oh, I We're see. not giving up on it yet. No, no. But uh, so, are you doing another warrant article, or are you are you doing that thing that we, we have authorization already been approved? Yes. And we're taking for this year. Right. Which then we're going to move to further money to net. We can do it for one year. Yes, that's what we learned at the yes. training. Okay. So, so we're that's doing what it for one Yes, we're going to okay. move the money right. to hold it for another year to see how we get through the winter. Excellent. So, to all, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't affect us then. No, it doesn't. Okay. No, not yet. But to go to go back again, there's a generator in line two for sixty-five thousand for this building. Air conditioners and compressors for one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars for this building. Uh, town hall and other. Uh, so there, there are those specific items. I think there's also a roof on line six for this building. A security upgrade for fifty thousand dollars for this building, and then then on line four. We are, the, this was the amount of money in this line that we were s saying was going to be for a police facility, which was never enough. And so now we're just saying town hall RPD system upgrades. So the bottom line is that should the town and the, the board and the town agree to stay in this building, there is already in this plan, as currently put out, $284,000 dedicated to specific town hall projects. You can see that in this section, the first page of the executive summary. There's, and then there's uh, $460,000, which represents that line that had been the RPD facility. So at the end of this, that second bullet, there is $744,000 earmarked in the CIP today for both specified, like the generator and the egg compressors, for both specified and as yet unspecified capital improvements and system upgrades across the 10 years. Which, you know, may allow the town to and the police to stay here comfortably, or, you know, that's again, that's, that's, that wasn't our charge. We just had to figure something out that would work so that we could present something to the, uh, to the board. The other uh, important item, I think, to mention is the bullet on the top of the second page. And 
we really had a very long discussion about this, but uh, you know, we bought a new fire engine with the bond a couple of years back. We have we had the replacement for the next oldest engine on the plan, and uh, the fire the fire department when they came to us, and we were already going to struggle with that six hundred thousand. But when we talked to them and just kind of innocently asked at the end, is so we captured everything that you folks you know think you need to do. I said, well, I think we're going to need to replace the tanker for three hundred fifty thousand dollars in twenty twenty nine. So we went, oh, it really hurts. So we talked about this, that, and the other thing. And, it, you know, rather than having that annual outlay just kind of really mushroom in order to cover that, the CIP committee is recommending to the board that they consider, when the time comes, bonding that the next fire engine, the $600,000. And, and then from that, but other than that, that the CIP would expect to fund the tanker and every other engine replacement. It's just, it was like so much at once that that was the best that, that we could come up with. And as part of the executive summary, you know, you see the, the bond replacement that we currently have. And I think I mentioned somewhere that uh, by the time that new fire engine becomes bonded, I think it would just be... Uh, one year of overlap with one other with one bond, and then the next year's it really is not as difficult. I think it's if you look at the uh, on the very last page three of three, you can see the bonding indications in the last bullet point. Which, um, just read. So, I know that there has been some talk about outsourcing fire. In light of all these big expenses, was that part of your conversation on the CIP? Committee? No, because that's not a that's a governing. Right, yeah, right. so that's really. I mean, maybe we had some incidental conversations, yeah, yeah, but, but no, that's not it. for us. I was going to ask the same question yeah. because I've heard that there's been a particular move in some sectors to regionalize the fire departments and to keep the costs down. And I don't know where that is at the county level right now, but I know that is. That is being studied. Personally, I'm a big proponent of regional collaboration. You know, we're such a small town trying to provide these services, and you know, the uh, the requirements don't get any less complicated from year to year. You know, the equipment that you have to have, the safety equipment. Uh, so, but that's not that's not that was. Would that be a topic of conversation for the select board? Is that? Who's the, who's the appropriate? Yeah. And it's not happening now, right now, so. I would say it's, yeah, yes. Yeah. Could it be conceivably be a Warren article to evaluate the pros and cons of? Yeah, there was a, there was a Warren article a year or so ago about the advice of, to, to formulate a committee to study uh, town administrator, town manager, or something yeah. like that. So, yes. Just to look into it. But I mean, yes. I would imagine there would have to be some amount of money to have a study to do that versus, hey, let's just look into it. Well, the town administrator one was done by by local volunteers, but it depends, you know, the fire station is a more professional. I mean, it gets very it, political, obviously. Yeah, but at so, some point in time, these are heavy capital expenses. Uh, if you look, so yeah. if you the look at. The sheriff's department has already worked in, in that direction, a law enforcement for this kind of thing. And they have been for over five years. You know, it's interesting to see, but I mean, if you look at the, uh, the so the total outlay in, in, in this, um, in the CIP is like 3.6 million. It's even beyond the 10 years, I think, but 3.6 million. You know, almost 2 million of that is the, is the fire station. On the other hand, the police is not equipment heavy, but they're, they're salary heavy. So, you know, there are different constraints, but yeah, but it's inescapable. You look at the, it's a lot of equipment outlay, and I'm not sure that we have absolutely everything yet that the plan is as comprehensive as it should be. I mean, every year we, we find a few more things. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So. Now, is it just that this equipment has a, has a, has a lifespan just sitting there? Because I know, fortunately, we're not getting a lot of calls for these equipment equipment use 
Can't be many miles on this stuff. They don't have miles. They have hours. Hours. Yeah. Hours they is because it will sit for. Oh, they run. They have they to run. run. They have to run to use the pumps and all yeah. of those. So training. Miles is yeah, yeah training way. and I get it. and yeah. all of that. Way. So when you when they say they need a new truck, but it only has less than a hundred thousand, that that is not a normal for that. It's just the amount of hours that's put on it is the the problem. They have the hour clocks on them anyhow, don't they? Yeah. So I believe they do. Yes. I mean, these are excellent questions for when you know Chief Rutherford yeah. uh, comes. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, we weren't evaluating that per se. We were just trying to, you know, this is what the fire department is telling us they need. So how can we make this? You know, how can we recommend? What, what do we do with this? But it's based so. on I think when an average fire truck should be replaced by doesn't mean it has to be replaced by. That's a big right. difference in time too. I mean, it depends how how much it is used and stuff. So. Yes, it is this, but it's like, okay, this is what we have in our station, so this one has to replace possibly this year and this year and this year. But is there, is there like, you know, when you factor in maintenance, it needs a transmission, is it worth replacing the transmission, or are we getting right there where you say you're going to latch in? A fire truck in this town, you, you can get 20 years out of these trucks very easily. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the yeah. last one I think had what? It had more, way more than 20. 29 for the yeah. diesel. Right. I mean, they, yes. they absolutely. You, know, you can get the life out of them, but the, you know, the department said they're running them every day. You're not getting that kind of lifespan, so it's, yeah. it's a whole different ballgame. Right. So you can see that there are really good questions about how best to, to provide. There is no standard on, you know, mm -hmm. there, uh, there is an NFPA saying right. fire truck should be replaced 10 years. Right. But they're not looking at the big picture. They're looking at to pick full-time departments, not looking at the rural right. departments. So I don't believe there's a standard out there yeah. for the rural departments yeah. because you've got rural departments driving 30-year-old trucks, and they're still operating fine. Mm -hmm. They take a truck from one of the other departments and take it and use it, so they get the life, you know, sometimes by use the equipment mm -hmm. to get what they need. So, And I'm, you know, I'm not saying that the fire department should go. No, I, I know, we're not going to, that's... Right, but, right. but these but are really have, good questions. We have right. done used ones. It hasn't been as successful as we would like to have seen, but can, we have. Can I ask about your the total fire department line? Yes. Uh, it doesn't. I, I think I'm missing something in your um, the way you're doing it. But like for the total fire department line, um, if you do like 2027, 20, for example, yes. it's there's thirty-five thousand dollars and fifty thousand, but there's it didn't subtotal. So okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's no problem. Okay. So a bunch of them are messed up. I just don't know if it's if it's walking out the bottom line. And, and it's there. there. Yeah. Possibly. No, pretty much the whole total oh, fire department, and then there are a couple others that I noticed throughout, um, like oh, 2026 for the highway department yeah. is off. So I would just check your bottom yeah. line. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I mean, the, 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 the totals agree, but, yeah, uh, it, but it could be that. I, I don't know, I'll take a look at that. Weird, yeah. yeah. Something to see if it looks off. So thank you for that. Yeah. And if there are changes, I'll just send them along to the board. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yep. So, so that I do have a question, just on the planning process. Yes. So the idea of this is to is to give the select board a rough idea of a warrant article that should go out. So twenty twenty would be for hundred and eighty six thousand. And that people can see, but there there's no requirement that five years down the line, that the numbers, that the details that made up the 2020 Warren article necessarily has to be spent on those specific items. In 2020, if there are warrants that are that are issued, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But but in the ensuing years, absolutely okay. not. Okay. The town so, won't vote on this. Yep. Uh, we won't vote on it. They're just it, they're just planning. So that so that. You know, we, the town, the board can say, okay, it's going to be $200,000 this year and, and maybe for the next few years, and okay, I think we can do that, or we can't do that. It, I, you know, I hate making decisions today yeah. that I know have implications in the future, and I, yet I can't, it, there is not even a guess about the future. So this at least is, I hope, a little better than a guess about what we've seen over the next several years. So in the case of the town hall, as an example, the air compressor, 2020, 
It's not planned to be purchased until 2025, but as part of a Warren article to fund the CRP, there's going to be 13, 14, 40, etc. The Warren article will just say $186,890. That's right. But the details that got to that 180 Are included here. money that's not going to be spent until 2025, possibly. Right. Or that could be changed. I guess that's my point. Yes. It, so so that plan. hundred. It, yeah, so that two, let's say that $187,000 is going to go to the CIP Reserve Fund. Mm -hmm. Next year, when the CIP committee looks at that and talks to department heads, they may, they may take some of the money that was, you know, let's say the $35,000 for, uh, I, I shouldn't take that. The, uh, uh, I think use the town hall. Air pack filling station under the fire department, you know, the $5,000 that, that that's part of this the hundred and eighty seven thousand at the end. Mm -hmm. There's not gonna be any uh, obligation to keep that five thousand dollars in for that for that, that item. item. Right. And that's up to the select board to decide. So this yes. is almost except for the case of a warrant article written for a specific item. This is just to say, well somebody said, Well where'd you get the hundred and eighty six? Well it's a planning document. Yes, it's just the sum. You can disagree with me, but right. this is the detail. And what we were trying to do was to keep this line right here, the annual yeah. request, you know, is uh, to reduce the, the steepness of that line, which we managed to do until the very end when it hit the floor. Okay. <laughs> but. Yes, it is technical. It's quite technical. Joe, I'm sure, is quite familiar with Kaflui. It's a wonderful IT term. So, uh, so, but hopefully, because that's 10 years down the road, those mitigation strategies or you know things change, and, and there'll be a way to, to manage that. There's like inflation built in, so I mean something that's whatever to that 10 years yes. is not going to be. That hap yeah, it's a good question. Luke. So that happens. It'll happen next year when the department heads look at this with us and say, is, is 600 still good for the fire? Mm -hmm. So, so it's not really an inflation builder, but it's an annual review of the amount. Sure. Anything else? Yes, I'd like to thank the board for all the work they did. I was at most of the meetings, and oh, really, committee. Went yeah, I the keep saying oh, board. Committee. We're a committee. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And your, old habits. Yeah, your fire engine replacement. That's where your math's wrong. There. When I looked at some of those numbers, when you add them up, and uh, we like. Well, to they just said I have zeros. Yeah. 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 And they go back even further here. All right. And I'd like to go to the digital booking fingerprint system. Yes. You're taking ten thousand out, but you're showing you're taking them purchase it next year. Yes. But your per, your target date is next year, and you yeah, got twenty. Yeah, we didn't change that. That's just move that over. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the next question. Is I actually think I've, it's been changed on the Excel spreadsheet, but I just yeah. was lazy and printed out the. Okay. Do you know what the tax impact is going to be on the one eighty six? No. The board should be able to answer that question. Sixty seven cents. On the tax rate. Right. And that's good or that's bad? I'm just stating the fact. Yeah. Looks like it's necessary. Yes, yeah, so I'm not saying that. I'm just what was coming up with a number. Last year's for the. Uh, last year's was, I, I don't remember, and I don't have that in front of me. That's a good question. So correct. Just, just yeah, I, there I was one year when it was like, like just under 100,000, but yeah. It, yeah. it looks like for the foreseeable future. You know, we're around two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Then we, you know, then it goes up. Okay, maybe two hundred forty, two hundred thirty thousand, and uh, until you know, it makes the huge jump at the end. I just did four years: sixty-seven, sixty-seven, seventy-five, and seventy-nine at this year's rates. Well, it's definitely going to go up, but it's things we need. Yes, and, and also because. This is just part of what the board will be presenting to us, right? Because there's offsetting revenues. Um, you know, one year the state gave us that fifty thousand dollars bonus or whatever supplement. So things can happen on the side, on other parts of the budget to mitigate this. You know, maybe the operating budget uh, doesn't have the same demands on it one year. I mean, it usually doesn't happen, but you know, there are there are ways to. Things could change, but right now we're looking at about two hundred thousand for the next few years for a name of the request. Any other questions? 
Well, sort of. Is there? Um, I kind of got a little fuzzy about my memory on this, but is there a new um, ad hoc group looking at the decisions around a fire slash, a, you know, a, a municipal complex kind of town hall and fire department together? Is there a study committee on that again? We have a committee which is not yet. Um, it's on my, it's on my plate. Um, we are having the, the police. Um, station um, reviewed by an outside company to see what um, what the needs are or if it's sufficient for what we have. It, it's about everything that about the police station that is happening right now. Uh -huh. And so as soon as we have that report, um, I believe that we are going to resume the space needs, which Charlie and Joe have both okay. said that they were interested still in there and. Lorraine's husband as well, is a, who's on the committee. So, so it's not, not. Ha I mean, it's going to happen. It's just we want to wait and see what this report also shows us to have a little additional information. Okay, because I was curious about that in setting aside funds for various projects inside this building. Uh, if it's determined that, uh, if the committee determines that they have a plan of action that goes in a different direction, is it possible to, you know, how is that um, accumulated um, CI or yeah CIP fund or reserve? I mean the build the cost redirected. Mm -hmm. The cost of the building? Oh, you mean like the things that mean, within the 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 inside the building? Inside the, if, There's if some things that we have to do now. We have okay. to get a generator now. So we're working on getting costs for that because. This building is a public safety building because our police department is in here. Right. They have to have a generator. We did find out um, the other night that we do qualify to submit for a grant, which we didn't think we were going to because it's not a new building. But I uh, found out that we can submit for a grant, grant to help pay for the generator. Um, there, are, um, We've also are going to have all the windows redone. We had some extra funds in the um, select uh, what size so they're going to be doing that hopefully soon. I'm not sure what the delay is, but it's going to take all these cracks up because none of these will be, uh, windows will close. You'll have gaps, so we're hoping to have it done before winter. So we're taking on some of the projects that we can if we have a little bit of extra money to keep. If, this, if it's chosen not to keep this building, these will just help us in what we're going to do if we sell it or repurpose it for another fashion. We're doing things that will help us in the budget for heat and all of those kind of things more so just to keep us going until we have really a decision and, and then if it's to stay then we will come up with a plan on what to do with that. So Angela, was part of your question how does it affect the... No, I was, I, it was more about can you redirect those funds once they're there and you decide well, we, we, we've accomplished enough here and we really need to move and, and build that um, that visionary building for the future, you know, for the long term. If that's the decision, can you then redirect those funds that accumulated in the mm -hmm. reserve account? And I'm assuming the answer is yes, because it's been yes earlier. Well, you wouldn't have taken that out of CIP until the time to use right. it. So, so it's, it's, it's just if anything in, is possible to it's just in there. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. it's in the CIP. <laughs> yeah. if, it, uh, if it's no longer needed, right, then, then it, it reduces the, the totals that are necessary. So you could maybe think now, well, maybe we don't have to bond that fire station. So, you know, we're paying for a bond for the building. But I mean, so it, yeah, I mean, there's, again, there's no, uh, these amounts that are apportioned out to particular projects are not sacrosanct. They're not fixed. They're okay. not fixed. They have no uh, legal ramifications. They're just a plan, you know, they just, okay, if we did this, this is what would happen. But in the meantime, some funds accumulate, and it may be able to may be able to redirect and use it for the new yeah. purpose. Yes. yes. Okay. But I think the the fire police and town administration facility is probably not on the plate anymore because there's not an, any land available to have the size that that would be. I mean, that was talk. We were only at one time talking about town hall and police, but there was also a lot of talk saying we should have them. Um, the three complexes together, which would be ideal, except there's just no land. Yeah. And to stay in the village area, and that's where you want to be, you want to be with your main yeah. um, uh, area of your village is your biggest targets for um, activity.
activity. So um, I don't believe that's on the radar anymore, but town hall and police is still. Good. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anything else about the CIP? Just quickly, the, uh, the, the bonding, on the bonding issue. Yes. Is, this, is that a 10 year? Uh, that we currently have our current the current bonds, yeah. they are various. We have three. Uh, one is a loan, and uh, two of them are bonds through the municipal. Does the interest stay the same, or does it change? One one is fixed. The USDA is fixed. That was the um, oh I see it's, it's the last page of the of this summary. Yeah. So if you so these are our current uh, long term financing projects. So, um, we have more author authorizations for the amounts that you see on that line for both the culverts, the fire engine, and the transfer station. So, 380000 450000 and 190000 We ended up uh, borrowing uh, 350000 for the culverts, 295000 for the fire engine, and one hundred and sixty-three for the transfer station. So, we had a discount, we had coupon bonding, so we don't need to get into the financial implications of all of that. But you, the actual interest rate is on uh, yeah. one of those lines. And then the term of the loans uh, or bonds, we have 30 years on the USDA culverts, and that was fixed, as you can see, going down. So and that's, and that was 30 years. The fire engine, because of the life of the fire engine, we were able to have a bond uh, for 15 years. And that will be finished in uh, 2028. 20, is that true? No. 33. 33. Yes, 33. Sorry. But yeah. And then the transfer station uh, had 10 years, and that will be done in, in 20, yeah, 2027, the last year. So that's why if we were to you know, bond that fire engine, it, it would be approximately the time uh, of the one of the reductions. Nice to have one of these ending with a continuum. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, um, so that's why I thought it'd be helpful to yeah, for that schedule. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Then the next item, it's probably buried here is uh, the Water District Commissioners. Uh, who water and sewer. Us, the water, thank you. The Water and Sewer District Commissioners who are here to request emergency expenditures. So, thank you, George. Yep. Much appreciated. Good night. Thanks, you too. Good job. Take care, George. Do you, for those who did not... Do we have another right chair now. for you, Byrne? I'll get one in a minute. First, these. this is a copy of the letter that was submitted to you. So I didn't need to toss it like that. I have copies as well. People need to toss it. Yeah. Yeah. We have any checks? Mine doesn't say copy on it. Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't. We will see him. Okay. Probably tomorrow. Anyway, just to give you a little hint. What was it? Three years ago when Partridge Lane culvert died? Could be longer ago than that. Well, or, yeah. But yes, we, we've been this route before. Yes. The town has. Some of you have heard about Willie Street and the discolored water. The water is discolored. Although the water is safe to drink, it doesn't meet um, in New Hampshire DES Rule 103.53 and 706.102. If you read the letter, um, our attorney actually expanded on the original letter to give more detail. Um, the water's safe, but it's unpleasant. Now, <clears throat> addressing that problem, ordinarily, what we would do is if we had put it in last year, if it had been put in last year's budget to address the issue, we would have. But it was not put in last year's budget, which we inherited. We weren't the creators of that budget. There's, ordinarily, if it wasn't urgent, or perceived to be urgent, we would wait until March and ask for a warrant article to borrow the money to do the work. However, um, 
we feel that addressing the problem as quickly as possible is desirable and probably necessary even. State law provides that if you don't have the authorization to expend the funds of your current budget, which we do not, and an unusual, I believe the, the term they use is unusual circumstance, that's the word they use, unusual circumstances arise, you can ask for a, a release or an expansion of your uh, authority under RSA 3211. And in order to do that, we need first to bring it before the Budget Committee. And that is the purpose of this letter, is to give you the background and explain how we're going to address this issue. Now, I've been doing some research on how we can address this issue in terms of contracting and construction. And apparently the idea of digging up the whole street and putting in more iron pipe is no longer a desirable thing. They've come up with a new technology where you can actually thread a new pipe in the opening of the old pipe. They actually burst it and then they pull uh, a flexible pipe, HDPE, through the thing, connect it up, connect it to the households, and you're back in business. The advantage with HDPE, however, is there's a substance called tuberculation. People have been going around saying it's rust, it's corrosion. It is not. It is a residue that builds up in iron pipes called tuberculation. And if you've got iron, it, is, it sticks to the iron pipe. And because of the nature of the fact that Willie Street acts like a I guess you might call it like a sewer trap. It goes down a steep hill and it goes up the other side. And if you look under your sinks at home, you'll see that U-shaped thing. Well, it works the same way. All the stuff gathers at the bottom of the hill. But if you use flexible line like HDPE, the tuberculation doesn't like to stick to that stuff. So it tends to get flushed away, pushed down the line. Now, the issue before us here is, do you agree that we should be given the authority to adjust our budget to pay for this effort now or not? Because I need a majority of the Budget Committee to sign off on this in order for me to pass it along to DRA to say, okay, now do you also believe? that this is a pressing issue and needs to be addressed now. Is it a simple majority? It's a simple majority. Is it time for us to ask questions if we have questions? Let's go shoot. Is the school going to be the... Yes. Uh, good. Interesting point. What was your question? You didn't finish yes. it So is the there. school going to be uh, advantaged by this? Is this going to be a good thing for the school and the water supply of the okay, school? Okay, thank you. Yes, in that I talked with Dick Fortier. Dick Fortier is again. They have a two-inch line feeding their domestic use. For building that size, that's inadequate. So it would behoove them to coordinate with these people, Ted Barry, to replace that two-inch line with a four-inch flexible line. And that that advantages a, the school. And that would be a separate item outside. That would be something that would not be our responsibility. Board. That would be the school's responsibility. But if they coordinate with our efforts, the incremental cost to them would be relatively small. So that that relates to a question that I had. Um, so what is the length of that line? Is it from the curb to the meter? I have no idea what they are from the curb to the house. So you're talking That's about, not a responsibility. You're talking about the exterior of the building, not the interior. You're talking about what's underground outside of the building. Mm -hmm. So, yes. because that relates to the homeowners on that street as well, yes. will they incur additional costs for the 
uh, connection that has to happen in any city or town, typically that connection isn't covered by what's happening on the street that belongs to the town or the state or whoever. What happens between the street that's owned to, by the district versus the house, the home? You finish the question. Okay. Our responsibility is to provide the pipe and what's called a curb stop. It's basically a valve to shut off the water to the house. We will replace the line in the street and the curb stop. Everything beyond the curb stop to the house is the property and responsibility of the homeowner or the property owner. Okay. And that's your example of the school. Yes. So you're, you're saying it would be make yeah. sense for the school to say you should, while we're doing all this, go from the curb stop in with the larger pipe. Right? To the meter. And yes. that could apply to homeowners yes. too if they have relatively crappy pipes from the curb stop to their house. I don't know. Maybe it's not cost effective, or maybe they don't need to do that now, but that might be an advantage to Well, also. I've seen Mick Construction put in, replace a line that went from, it was actually Al Dion's house, from the far side of Silver Street to the house just by using a winch okay. and a chain. I don't know if that'll work here, but it's something to consider. Okay, so. Um is that optional? The homeowner does not have to replace that pipe? Or is it not optional? It's up to them. Because what Angela is saying is, yeah. if you put this new line in, yes. all of the subscribers are going to have their existing connection restored. No better, no worse. Should they have it replaced to eliminate this problem? that you are trying to replace, uh, you are trying to eliminate for the city. Do I understand it correctly, Angela? Y yes. Okay. So are they going to have to do something else to get the full benefit of what you're trying to do, and are they going to incur that cost on their own? Cynthia Clevens, who's from New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, as part of another communication said, we recommend that the homeowners replace their lines from the street to the meter. Mm -hmm. The meter's in your basement. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like I said, most of these are domestic water lines. And if they're copper, as the school is, replacing it with flexible line like a PVC or HDPE advantages the user. And it can be sometimes pulled through. It just depends on, you know, if this is a straight shot, it'll probably work. If it goes around Robin Hood's barn to get to the basement, well, that could be a problem. But this project is not going to address that part of the uh, improvement. This project is just going to address the water main and up to the shutoff valves for each of the residents. Correct. Which is the bulk of the problem, but you know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. We're encouraging the school to replace this domestic water line. We can't require it. Yeah, I, I have a question to you for you. By encouraging either the school or, or homeowners, are you are you are you anticipating holding a public hearing on this? Are you anticipating providing uh, you know written material that, that outlines what a homeowner might be able to do? And who they, some contacts that they might talk to if they, they want to uh, take advantage of it, doing it at the same time that there is an advantage to them? I mean, uh, are you planning on these uh, communication materials to, the, to your water district? We're going to have an informational hearing next Wednesday, the 30th, at the Legion, before our regular meeting. That will be posted tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yes, but we will also oh, be posted, posted, tomorrow. Sorry. posted tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. And it will say that this is the talk. Yes. About. Yeah. These are the issues we're going to be going over. We don't have all the answers totally, but we've got enough to start the process. That's the important part. Now, with the DRA, you have to have a financing plan, which I see you included here. So, uh, so it's going to come up come from rate increases. But that, a, that was... A, Fine. Wait, we've got to answer this question yes. first. That's why I stopped. Yes, 
we, we're going to have to do some sort of supplemental uh, billing. Now, it may be part of the regular billing, or it may be as a separate billing, but we've got to do that in order to fund this, because we have to know either as cash or as receivables that we have the money to cover the project. Right. So my question's on the finance. She was, had her hand up first. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't see that. I used to have good peripheral vision. I guess I was. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so first, how many total homes are going to have are part of this? Out of the 570 or so total, 549, how many homes are going to be impacted by, improved by this effort? Four. Four homes. Plus the school. Okay. Then the other question go, goes. Um, yeah. Four. Go ahead. No, I'll right. Make a comment. And then, um, so I understand that the plan would be funded long term by rate increases, either. Well, no, 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 very short term. Very short term. But that's not going to happen before you have to pay the bills for this. Where's the Where's the real short term funds coming from? Right, you're going to have this company come in and do this for one hundred six thousand. And let's say it gets done by February of next year. You're, no, 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 we want it done by at latest December 1st. Okay, but still, you're not going to have the funds from the ratepayers to cover that 106. And so I guess my question is, where would those, for that very short period of time, where would that 106 come from that, so you could pay the company, Ted Berry Company, and then you would collect it over whatever time period from the ratepayers? We have cash, sufficient okay. cash, okay. cash, and because a billing is a receivable, it's also considered functionally going to turn into cash. Okay, so you, you have a deposit, demand deposit somewhere to pay Ted Berry, so you don't have to do any, you know, short two month, three month borrowing. We can't borrow. Okay, All right, that's good. I understand that. And then I guess what would happen come March? Put the wiring order to get it together. Then we have to raise 106. No. No, once you've done it, you've done it. You can't buy it twice. Oh, I know. So they, 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 I guess my, I, my concern would be it can't be rejected, really, and somebody's holding the bag. So you're right. I mean, so the people who are, can approve this are us mm -hmm. and the New Hampshire Division of uh, Department of Revenue Administration. Because it falls yeah. under this emergency expenditure. Okay. And as long as the rates, the, these, the, the water and sewer has the ability to adjust the rates, however, to pay for this, that's going to be fine. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So you don't you don't have to have any approval from anybody to raise the rates? I mean, that's, that's, I think that's what Joe yeah, is. I know. Okay. Okay. But in fact, everyone who is in the district is going to end up paying this approval. Yes, they are. That's the only way it could work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, not to move a bad question, but I, I haven't been at a lot of the meetings, but I know that there's been controversy. How is the rest of the pipeline in the system? Well, and funny. will that have to be addressed in the very near future? Because as early as a week ago, we were asking, how are we doing as far as funding goes for the pump replacement and anything else? And we kind of thought we were going to be all set, that you had reserves. And then this week we get this letter. So we just want to make sure <laughs> well, there's no other surprises. Well, when you do municipal funding, you do the best you can to guess what you're going to run into. But sometimes you get side what that happens. But I think Charlie's saying that certainly this didn't happen within the last seven days. No, it didn't. That it might have been helpful for the budget committee to know that you were even thinking about this or that there was some plan. You know, I think that's... Well, actually, in July, we, we talked about it a little bit. We just said, yeah, we know you're having problems, and they're not problems that you created. They're problems that have accumulated over the, the lack of maintenance or the age of the system. Are you going to have enough money uh, in your budget for this year? Uh, or is there going to be a big swing? And 
could we get a heads up? So I guess we, this is the heads up we get on this part of it. <laughs> we're talking about current budget yeah. that was passed in March. Yeah. And then we're talking about this. They are very separate things. I know, but we were talking in July about should we be hearing why you're going to need a lot more money in your budget for next year now so that we can so that we can understand better when you do present the budget um, what's going on and, and you know we didn't have any idea what what you're up against so um, uh, you know I, I guess what we I guess what we were concerned about was we knew something was coming because of all of the all the attention that's been given but we didn't know how it was going to come or what your plans were on it and so uh, you know I think we'll all applaud you taking action to solve a problem and it takes a little while to figure out which way you're going to go but instead of holding all the cards to the best if you could have said hey this stuff we're working on we would really have felt a lot more comfortable with this presentation tonight wait, wait I, I need to respond when we took this on in March, yeah. we heard a lot of things about you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do this. We said, let's do a little investigating. Let's find out what absolutely must be done and what can be deferred reasonably and what is really not a problem. Okay? And so we've been sorting through that I want versus I need that stuff, that attitude, mm -hmm. and we're arriving now with a solid data. It's taken us that long to tweeze it apart. I understand. Okay, so we couldn't have told you in July what we know now That's because good. we were still investigating. Okay. Can I add to that too? Our original estimate for this was what, 212,000? 210 to 300,000. Okay, and by searching around, We've knocked the cost down to about 160,000. 106. 106, excuse me. And probably a better area. One of the things we looked at, because of the tur turbulation, turbation, that crap, the crap in the pipe. Yeah. Um, we actually cut a section of pipe and had it tested, and the pipe still had 78 percent of its life expectancy. But in discussing with the experts, and we talked to what four different companies, I think, they said, "Listen, this is you can do this until all freezes over, because of the way the pipe is, because that water goes down at the bottom, the crap sits there. When the water flushes through, it goes to your house. This is not going to work well." Furthermore, their recommendation was that's I believe a four-inch pipe, or is that a six? That's a six, and they're they're going to put an eight in, so you'll have a higher volume plus. The new material has a, allegedly, you don't have to know it's a new material, but it has a longer life expectancy and does not chemically go with the, the basically the, the um, iron in the water. It doesn't mix and it doesn't create that problem, so it's less likely. Now, obviously, the best way would be to put the pipe straight across and not have that giant dip in the street. Um, but not having to repave the roads, just as smudge. Much. Just, yeah, we're, as much. you're obviously going to have to dig up some of it, but the amount is not the same as having to pave. I forget what the paving price was to repave the street. It was astronomical. Um, and that's why I said it was about 100 bucks a foot, and at 190 feet, you can figure out how much that's going to go. So when we look at the whole picture, this is about the best deal going. We need to get this done before the pavement plants end next month because the first freeze, they're going to start shutting down. This is a good time to get it done, and the contractors we've talked to can get this done fairly quick. Um, not kicking this, this can's been kicked around a whole bunch, and it took quite a bit of work because the first plants that came in were. You know, ridiculous. So we're going to dig up the whole street, put in all new pipes, and then they recommended replacing all the pipes in town. But in fact, most of the other stuff in town, 
for the most part, seems to be in very good shape. Right. So it's, it's old, but it's in good shape. And but the you're not having this turbulation problem. In everybody's water in town, regardless of where you are, will have tuberculation in it. You, it'll just be so diluted, you won't see it. It's concentrated there because it sits there. I the rest of the pipes, you get a little bit of rust. I mean, everybody's seen it. They flush the pipes, and you get rusty water for an hour or two. You put in your showers, take the heads off, and boom, and it's clean again. Right. This will aid in that. Right. Yeah, she's been oh, waiting. Yeah, oh, yeah, you should. I'm still answering this yeah. question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I have a comment, and now actually I have two questions. Um, your informational meeting is scheduled on the night of trick or treating. Mm -hmm. Um, which many of It'll the... It'll be after dark. Uh, is it 6.30? They should 30. be home by then. No, it goes from 5 until 8, I believe it is. Okay. So, well, but regardless, many yeah. of the people who are affected by this are going to have children who are trick-or-treating, so just putting it out there that you may not get the turnout, that would be helpful to have this discussion. Um, my second question is, being as this will... I assume shut off the water to the school. No. no. How will it not shut off the water to the school? There are replacement lines that will be put in. Mm -hmm. There's one company that Ted Berry told us about called Thirsty Turf. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put in temporary supply lines to the houses. They come along, they dig up their curb box, they break away the household supply, and they put in a, a temporary line that runs across the surface. you got to okay. understand. Okay. So they'll have water. So it shouldn't affect the water supply to the school while they're... Not the water supply, but the holes in the road will... Will affect... So which... So just they, the while... They just really, stay off of Willis Street. I never know how to right. put the right way. Where they, where they bring the buses in to, dis, to unload the kids, yep. that's going to be blocked off. That They'll have to unload on Locust. Don't okay. you have... But it's only going to be for three days. Do you have any other? Uh, thank you. That's, that's lovely. I still think we should probably have a conversation with the school about it. We need to talk to the school about it. Um, okay. Uh, I did have another question, but I can't remember it right now, so go right ahead. Well, what occurs to me is that when the town, if you don't want to know what saying, when the town has embarked upon projects like that, it, 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 it was always good PR in our part to have uh, pre-project pre meetings with stakeholders or constituents that were going to be affected. And that really, I would strongly encourage the Water District to do that because as soon as possible, because the school, yeah. you know, and we had this, and we were on Willie Street, so we did, you know, Dick Fortier came to our meetings uh, to, to make sure that we were all scheduled, we had homeowners, uh, it was, you know, it gets complicated. So we had all of the stakeholders come to these planning, pre-planning, whatever they were, uh, planning meetings. Second. That's what our informational hearing takes place. Yeah, well, I strongly, I, 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 it will affect how I vote on this if I thought you were going to continue to have an informational meeting on trick-or-treat night. I just think you, this affects people in the school. They are parents of children who are going to be out trick-or-treating. And so... So what night would you like to have it? Let's come right to it, that. It, uh, I'm not a parent. I just know. As soon as possible. We need it as soon as possible, right? So pick a night. Oh, that's not, that's that's not a, for us to pick a night. Right. We're, what we're saying is that you have to be sensitive to what's going on in the community and trick or treat and your customers. And, and if the school is a big proponent of what's going to happen and you've got parents who are, who are uh, with their children trick or treating, that just doesn't seem, it, it just seems completely unfair. And not, not one not person positive. brought up trick or treat. Mm -hmm. None of us have kids and nobody at the meeting ever even mentioned trick or treat. When we announced the last meeting schedule, schedule. So we're bringing it up here. All right. So now, now and we know. Yeah. I'm flexible. Notice, so. We're flexible on the time. I just don't see how you're going to do it in the next five weeks. I mean, that is a really five. tight schedule. Five. Well, we're going to try to do it less than that. And how are you going to do that and have all these informational meetings that you're saying you're going to have? Only need and you notify really the and notify the right. rate payers of this this uh, big jump in your bill that's going to be due in 30 days. Do you know how long it takes the DRA to approve this? Yeah. No. It's not overnight. 
Exactly. It's not overnight. It's refreshing a project. It needs to be done faster. Right. Well, we need to get the ball rolling. Yes. And that's what this letter is all about. We've got to at least take the first steps. Because if you people say no, it's dead in the water right now. It's not dead in the water. It's put out for a warrant for March or whatever. Just because we don't have enough time doesn't mean it's on the fault of the budget committee. What you're telling us is a lot of information with uncertainties about how are you going to get this accomplished and our names are on that document. Think about it. Nobody here, I, I would say that nobody in this room right now says we don't have an issue. This is not a new issue, so I'm not even sure you can get approved because it's not a new problem. This is a pre-existing problem for several years. So how is that unexpected problem and how will you get approved for that? When Parkage Culvert died, it that was unexpected. Been deteriorating for quite some time. But then it became emergent. Then it became obvious and you couldn't avoid it any longer. You don't have to talk about that. But well, it, it was, yes, it, it, what we were facing, the water lines had already, the water line and the sewer line were above the culvert. So, bad design, but there you go. And so, as the as the culvert was collapsing on itself, it was causing the water line and the sewer line pressures on them, and the water line uh, uh, burst uh, twice. And so, so it, it was an actual it was an actual, actual emergency, emergency. Yeah. and we had to deal with it, or we were facing with the sewer also failing. And if the sewer failed, it would have dumped all of that stuff all the way down to the Salmon Falls River, and we would have been in hot a hot mess of trouble. And so there were clear uh, health uh, emergency issues associated with the Partridge Lane. I'm not saying that, that I, I am uh, very willing to consider this. I, I understand that sometimes things happen. My, I'm concerned about an information session uh, that happens on, on trick or treat night. I, that, that just really, I think, we would need to, I would need to have some commitment that, that get, that's moved to a, a night that it seems to be uh, not have such a, you know, difficult contention with other things in the community. Um, I think I'm done. So, I, I mean, I guess there, the one issue is a lot of concerns have been implementation plans. Maybe you don't do it on Halloween, you need more information uh, sessions, you should have a planning session with the impact. Those are all three things that are implementation-like items. But is that really what we're supposed to vote on, or we're really supposed to vote on it's something that they seem that the, the, the people responsible for the water and sewer district think needs to get done now versus March? Do we, as budget committee members, do we feel that financially it's feasible and their plan to address those finances are okay? I mean, right, it's really just the, the latter that we should be concerned about, although the input is all valid. You know, the implementation isn't, I don't think it's our issue unless I'm missing what our role is here. I think you're absolutely right as far as the scope of what we are actually responsible for. I, with, one, with one caveat, I mean, I still feel strongly about the information session. Yeah, no, I, I, I also feel strongly about the school, and, it, and it's a short amount of time for the school all of a sudden to try to react yes. to this. And... And if they can't, and it disadvantages them financially down the road, and I don't know that. Yeah. I think we, this is a case of maybe we don't have enough information to figure and, that and out. And to your point, you know, I thought the point you made earlier is that you know, kind of a, a key, the, the, the areas that are key to being impacted by this, the school, um, the homeowners, and that's probably about it. That they should be talked to before that gets done. And I think that'll, because you'll probably get the feedback other than what's here. Well, they've been repeatedly at the meetings. Okay. Yeah. And I, I know I've personally talked to several of them. I live right around the corner from them. And they're aware that we've got something going, but until we get approval, there's nothing I can do about it. Just a quick question on implementation. Is there an optimum time for the homeowner to do this while this is being done? Or yes. that it's less expensive, easier? Yes. No. If, if they decide, they if they decide to do it, right. If they decide to do it, I'm strongly urging the school to 
upgrade from two inches to four. While inches. the contractors there, they're doing everything. The pits they do are the open. The box is more right expensive there. to wait and do it later. Should they decide to do it? But, but I think that's also another reason why rushing this okay. might not yes. be advantageous to right. the homeowners, to the users of it, because they're not going to have enough time to think about. Do I have the funds to lay out right. to bring somebody in? Who's going to do the contracting work? Can they schedule with you guys with what you're planning to do? You know, but um, let me let me add to that though. All of those houses are new for the most part on that street, um, and I know when they've done it elsewhere that I've had other properties. Sometimes I've changed the lines. Sometimes I haven't, and it is not mandatory to change the lines. You right. may not. In my case, if they replaced it down my street, I've got brand new lines. I've got 209 feet of brand new two-inch line going to my house. There's no way I would change that. And I suspect when they put those the four units in what used to be the cattle barn over there, those are all new. I saw them putting it in. Now, whether they put in copper or the PVC, I don't know. But the other houses are brand new. I find it hard to believe they're 15 years old or so. I don't think they were running copper from the street because yeah. pretty much they did do the copper. But yes. we're guessing, right? Yeah. I mean, right. what Joe is saying yeah. that, you know. But that's a decision they can make. It's not like they have to change their pipes this week or the week that this is done. They can do it two years from now or never. But this would be from a, a cost standpoint. This, If they wanted to do it or they determined it, that it does need to be done, it would be more cost effective to do that while the hole is open and everything else is there. Although, and, and I guess the point is they're not being given enough time to even think through that process about saying, yes, I need to find somebody, is my pipe needing to be replaced, yes or no? If it's yes, can I find a contractor to go to it? Is that contractor available for when you guys are planning it? You know, I understand you're trying to get it done in a real short period of time, but that also puts the onus on um, the homeowners and the school maybe to make a bad or, or a poor financial decision. That's all. Part, part well, I have a couple of questions. Hang on, let me finish, and I, I'll answer your question. Um, part of the reason this has pushed so fast is because this has been growing and it got worse this year. Mm -hmm. And they have been the impetus behind it. It was finding a way to finance that in a reasonable period of time. And our recommendation was get it done sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. If they have to change minor stuff in their own yard or something, they can do that at their own expense, at their own time, and that's not holding it up. But if we wait until March, it'll be yeah. May or whatever. Right now, they're getting, we're paying for a bottle of water for those houses mm -hmm. to make sure that they've got decent water there. What was the number? It was four houses? Four houses. Four plus the school. Yeah. Four plus the school. So four four yeah. 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 So a couple of questions. We were looking at the budget. This seems like a small point compared to the bigger conversation, which I'll come back to. But you have trench line replacement, 66,800, and excavation of access pits and lines to houses. So those, so I just need a little clarification on what you mean by lines to houses. It's not... To get to the curb box. To what? To get to the curb boxes. To get to the curb box, but not to the meter on the right. house. No. Okay. No. So that's one of my questions. I, I, I want to make a comment about the timing around this. This was a problem that existed and was part of a um, uh, the assessment of the entire system. And that report was made available to us sometime in the spring. So um, of this year. Of this year. Mm -hmm. So I think that there, the urgency around this isn't as recent as the last month. Uh, and I, you know, I understand that you wanted to study longer uh, how to approach the problem and what to do. But um, in the timeline from March to now, uh, in the timeline that you have been commissioners, it could have been possible to do some of this conversation with with the community, the, the district community, and and particularly with the four homeowners on Willie Street. You know, it's a surprise to the school department, just as one example. And it's a small number of people, granted, but there's still a process involved. If the, if the school department is, is surprised and they have a lot of questions, each homeowner on the street is going to have those questions as well. So I think that 
taking a little more time. I, I support this. I went and looked at Ted Berry's website. I understand that you didn't really do a bid process, if I'm understanding correctly. You didn't put a bid out. And so this was kind of narrowing the field to something that would work well and be affordable for us and be efficient. And so I appreciate all of that research that you did to come to Ted Barry and to think about what his company had to offer, which now is owned by some other company. And then yet I looked at their, the evaluations of them on, uh, you know, that's available online. And they have very good references, you know, and I see all of that. Uh, have you spoken with the superintendent? Is he aware of what you're planning? Is he in some way engaged in the members of the district to try to help advance this? I just think more time needs to be taken for the process around communication. I'm excited to see what you're bringing forth. Please don't get me wrong. I am concerned about the amount of time in which you think this can all be accomplished. I'm not so sure that it's possible to do it and have it be um, agreeable all around. Because there are people who come to those meetings who don't agree with some of the plans. And so I just, I'm cautious about where you might go. Unfortunately, those people aren't the ones that are being affected by that. They will pay the bill just like the rest of us. But the other side of the coin you, you mentioned about the money, why didn't we do this sooner? There was no money. We came up with a plan. You were at the last two meetings ago and we came up with a way to access the funds that were sitting. Mm -hmm. That is now legal, it is in place, and we can get that. There was no position to get in place. Wait, 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 wait let's stop. I'm not wait. actually talking about this rushed project. I'm talking about process that, that could have been started back when we knew this was something that needed to be done. Months worth of conversation, but then everyone would feel like embrace this as a successful option. Angela. You were there at many of the meetings. Maybe you missed one of them, missed one. but we had some extensive conversations, especially with the people on Willie Street about this. And we said, you know, we're still investigating. We're still looking for the solutions that are necessary. Will you work with us? And they seem to go along with this. In fact, I got a recent email from Liz Morganelli. She's moving from here. Yes, I know she's moving from here, but she still lives here. Yes. And she appreciates the fact that we're proceeding with this. Can I suggest that, I mean, it, it's really a very small population of people from a communication standpoint. You have four homeowners and the school board, or maybe the superintendent. That just to maybe alleviate some of the concerns here, that you, that you have an informational meeting with them to get their buy-in. I mean, it's only, you know, five people that really have to vote on it. A little more than that, a few more than that. Okay. Um, many people are married. There's husband and wives. <laughs> and the, the one that was renovated into four units, that's four people okay. who, okay. who want, will probably want but to. But that's a landlord, landlord's decision, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yes. So, and well, the four units four is a landlord that has yeah. to. So, right. and that's even more, I mean, I. everybody has valid concerns here from a community standpoint on how best to communicate and the implementation, you guys own it, you have a plan. I don't think it's, let's say, my view to, to question whether I would agree with that or not. Our role is really from a financial standpoint. So, I mean, I guess we could maybe meet part way and say, expand your informational piece sooner to get their buy-in, and then we can maybe talk about it from a financial standpoint. Regarding finances, is there a reason why you didn't do an RFP? A request for, for, for a proposal. Well, actually, we asked the superintendent to please investigate Suez, who does this sort of thing, and we got no, we haven't heard anything yet on that point. Well, but if you have a formal RFP process, which is what we did for Partridge Lane, yeah. yes, absolutely. Bids. Yes, we had bids, bids out, and it, really, we have we have one for 65000 and one for 100000 It was practically double. And that was the one I opened first, and I was like, <laughs> So, but fortunately, we got the second bid. So there can be a wide variation in what people are willing to do, depending on what their other business is at the time. You know, if some people, if somebody's anticipating a downtime, they, you know, they can come in with a bid that's more attractive. So, you know, for a $100,000 project, um, you know, just, 
just so you know, the original, the best deal we've got. And we've been looking at this since early summer um, on, on who is able to do this and how much it would go. And the numbers went as high as 350 which we couldn't come up with. And then through the search and talking to different companies, they all had different ideas. One of the things about doing it now is before the paving season not only has ended, but a lot of stuff is a slack period. So we got better bills because of this time of year, which is when construction slows down. And, you know, other than the interruption of the bus parking, the people on the street thus far have been in support of that. So those are the people most affected. They've all been to the meetings. We've had meetings every two weeks. In fact, we were supposed to have one tonight, but we're here. Um, and we moved it to the 30th. So it's not like people didn't know. It's not like you guys didn't have multiple meetings as well. Well, we didn't know. I didn't know until I got this letter, so... There was no proposal presented at those meetings. I was at the meetings. There was no proposals presented to any of us yeah. were yes, there. Were. No, oh, the last, no, there wasn't. The not that you were going to do were. it within the last next four weeks. No, um, no, that, no, that, no, that was no, definitely no. No, no. That came you, out. you talked about the impact to each resident who has the water, and you talked about opening up trust funds and moving fund balance money That's to That's a them. separate issue. Oh, well, I thought that was this. for this project. No, no, it is not. <coughs> no, what was that for? That is for a capital reserve fund for other purposes, a long term. So why did it have to be done all of a sudden? Because it's the best way to put money aside and lock it up. Without having a public hearing. Huh? Without having a public hearing. I was going to even go down that road anymore. Yeah, this is a different no, subject. We so, just talk about that later. I, I think what I... But, I think what you're hearing from us is that, you know, despite the fact that we met just last week and then the quarter before, and you know, and I asked and, you the question, and we, we, yeah, and we expect, uh, you know, some kind of advance. If, if this had been, this must have been on your minds. I don't think this happened in the last six days, and so yeah, it did. Well, it, that's hard you, to believe. I mean, Bob just said you've been researching. Right. How to do we've been researching, and I brought that and up. So and so at this point, it's and taken about five to six days. have not heard anything about it since what July? I mean, I, I yeah. And you can't well, do you dismiss. Want to know all the fail things we tried. You can't dismiss school bus parking or school bus transportation. I mean, they have to be brought in on this. Whether we and have you the can't, budget to and they're not the four inch pipe replacements. Yes, and you can't expect them to dance to your tune. They have their own. Thing. So you have to be able to reach some meeting of the minds, and that's what it sounds like. It's, and I, I actually, I mean, I, if I were in your position, I would want it done as well. So, you know, but, but you, sometimes the process has got to be more, has got to be uh, more transparent. It has, it has to take a longer period of time so that, so that people, so that your constituent groups and your stakeholders, whether it's us, the school really have more say so that they can see that there's actual a plan that takes into consideration when the public hearings are or information sessions sessions whatever you call them and that they're not on a night that would be tremendously disadvantageous to parents so that they so that the school has time to think about and plan and work with their own bus company they're not going to be you're not going to be able to make that yourself you're going to have to involve your bus company and how you're going to manage all of that it these things do it's unfortunate but they take time and I will stop Okay. Why do we do a straw vote? I'm, I'm suggesting no. I think we should. Can, is it is it okay for us to meet in privately and discuss this? No. Not no, so. no, maybe public. The vote is public, but no. I mean, in, in terms of we as a committee can only meet in public. Okay, that's what I mean. And, and the only time we can go into we could go into an executive session if it had to do with personnel okay. or very small. Situa set of situations right. and yeah. they we're not there. This is not that. Yeah. So, so our so I think if we do a straw vote, I think we have like I said a few minutes ago, we have to categorize it into: Are we voting only on the financial side of this to give them the approval to go ahead, or does it also include the implementation plan? I mean, most of the stuff that people have talked about here have been 
the implementation plan should be different, a little bit more detail, more communication out there. I don't know if that's our job. I, I'm leaning more to we should vote just on the financial side. I, I agree with you, Joe, in that a lot could, be, could have been done to make this more transparent. And it's not my job to say it should have been done. I understand what you're trying to do. You've got a lot of pressure. You've got a problem. This is a solution you got for the problem. I think our job is just to decide whether or not you get to go forward with this particular plan. My only concern, although I agree with a lot of the remarks that have been made about presenting it, is that I'm sure this is going to cover the project. Are you sure this is enough money to make this happen? My understanding of this technology, although it does have a lot of advantages, is that it's not a guarantee. Running that pipe is not a guarantee. If you have kinks or problems in the existing pipe as you try to go through, you might have to dig it up at that particular spot anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't spent the time that you guys have spent on it. Well, that's but, why we have contingency. Yeah, okay. And is the contingency also for the temporary water lines to the four houses in our school? That's, a, that's, no, that's excavation exit and lines to houses. That's that it's included in that number. In the twenty five thousand. Okay. Thanks. What I think you can't create any contingent around is the timeline. So if something goes wrong and now we're bumped up against the fall season, what happens then? Uh, it may or may not be perfect, and so it may, not, may or may not be a perfect plan in terms of the time of year you're trying to do this. So, um, you know, I, I tend to agree with you, Joe, that uh, we can't dictate your process. We can only suggest that maybe you're headed a little too quickly uh, toward this solution now that you found it six days ago. Um, and so I personally would support your request for what you're doing. I don't think it's very well advised because I think of the time of the year and the amount of process that has been skipped to try to get people on board, whether it's those four homeowners or the larger and the school department or the larger district. So uh, while I could vote for this, just in terms of what Joe described, we're just, vote, we're just saying, well, yes, go ahead. We approve your ability, you know, we, we approve contingent upon RSA 32 11. 11. We approve as in our role as your budget committee, approve you taking these next steps. But if something goes wrong, this committee is not responsible. You right. are responsible. Right. And there is correct. no blame laying, no blame laying to employees or to anybody in this group. Right. Because you're taking this on yourself, yes. despite the fact that you're getting advice not to rush to it in this manner. Uh, so I, I feel damned if I do and damned if I don't. If I don't recommend this, I'm hurting four people who really deserve and to have school. good drinking water and the school. I keep forgetting the school. Drinking water in the school. It's important. But making this decision, I'm supporting a rush to something that just in terms of the time of year, if it were August, I could feel differently. Mm -hmm. But it's, no, it's November and next week. So I have some misgivings about what we're headed into. But you know, is that my problem? It is the commissioner's problem as far as I'm concerned. Or they're going to come back to the budget committee looking for more funds to finish funding something that went wrong because not enough information or research was done to correct the problem. So it can domino. I would like to ask if the uh, largest stakeholder, and I realize you're not the board, you're not the school board, but do you, what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, my thoughts are that we don't have a uh, regularly scheduled school board meeting until the second week of November, and it sounds like the plan is to go forward with this sooner than that. Um, and uh, there are a lot of pieces that we're going to have to figure out in the meantime. And, uh, and to your knowledge, you've not been contacted by the water district? No. Oh, no. I we talked to Dick Ford here. Well, he's the helpful. building. He's the, um, the facilities, facilities manager. manager. Right. 
Um, but, you know, I mean, we, we have some decision making to make around this four inch pipe, whether we want or can pay for it. Um, we need to talk to the bus company about that. We need to certainly communicate this out to parents when they see that there's a water line going across the street in the yard or whatever it is. Are we going to have to rip up? What are we going to have to rip up in order to do the four inch line? Is it work that we've just recently completed over the summer? There was a lot of paving that happened. There are just a lot of different things that I really feel like we as a board need to talk to the administrators about and need to talk amongst ourselves about. I don't, um, yeah, I, and, 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 I, and I hear Joe's point about the finances, but I'm also the ex officio for the school board, and from the school board's point of view, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about what that means for um, the entity that we support, so. Other than the, you know, the implementation concerns, would you, who would, who would address whether the school board or the superintendent feels that this is important enough to do this immediately and not follow maybe some, a little bit more process on it? Or is it okay to wait till March to do the Warren article? Do? I mean, you're the users of the water. You so know, do we do, uh, we have filtration systems on all the drinking fountains um, in the school. So I know that, that, you know, those are in place and have been for a couple of years or more than a couple of years now. Um, so that aspect of it should be just fine. Um, and as the commissioners have said, that there's, that there's nothing unhealthy about drinking the water. Um, so, so there's that aspect. I would definitely, I mean, I would want to talk to the building principal for sure um, and see how he feels about it, uh, as well as the superintendent. But I think, you know, the building principal would probably have the best idea um, about how it will affect the school community and, and communications and all that. If, if so I could, could, can I just jump in here? RSA 32, this particular document, only authorizes us to exceed our current budget, mm -hmm. okay? We may not turn a shovel full of dirt. It just gives us the authorization to do that. If more meetings are required, we'll have them. Oh. We are up against the weather, and the town does not want their streets filled with the holes when there's a snowstorm. So this is another timing unfortunate is the piece about this coming to us. You know, if, I mean, if we had felt informed along the way of your process, I think probably, I, you know, I certainly would have been able to have some of those conversations with the school board, and I think we would have been able to have the conversations that we're having here tonight in, in previous meetings, and that probably would have helped. The other alternatives we looked into were rejected. You wouldn't want to know about them. But the other thing is, though, when we <coughs> authorize this, it's an authorization for you to spend. To so, exceed our budget, yes. Yes. Or Whether or not you do that project, you're mm -hmm. putting it in your operating budget. Mm -hmm. For this purpose. Well, for a purpose that associates with that. It can be associated parts of that whole project. No, no. It's not, a cap, it's not a capital expenditure done by a warrant. So you're putting it in their budget. Doesn't that give an authorization to spend? Help me out here. Yes, yes, yes it, it does. I mean, it, yes, it, I mean it, it, once it's in the... Can we restrict it in, um, in the, uh, the, the motion? I don't know. No, I don't think we can. We can. Um, we can. Yeah. Well, to whom is this an emergency, I guess? I mean, this is emergency expenditures. The biggest client is the school who is not really officially aware of it. I mean, the buildings, the building person is not the official school person mm -hmm. or school board person. Uh, so if it's not a perceived emergency for them and there are only four houses, it is, is it a perceived emergency for those four houses? Who are getting supplied bottled water from the district? Only for two months. Only for two months. And that was something that we put in place in the hopes that we would have a plan. By that, and that was only two meetings ago that we came up with that. So that was a stopgap to get us to a fix. There also and was a recommendation by your superintendent to use some excess water from one of your wells and have them fill bottles. And he withdrew that. Why? 
Why? Because he said the logistics of getting that and having to have people come to the well to get it, etc., could cause a problem. But I believe I heard him say that he would deliver it. Well, it, did he not? Tell us there was no phone. It was at your there. meeting. Well, there was no, yeah, there was no we phone. agree. I heard it too. Yep. Okay. But there was no follow through. So the next well, meeting, we mean, that's what you have to. You have to prove it. Um, exactly. It, at any rate, let me address one of the issues right now. Friday night would be suitable for most people. Nobody's working. There's no Halloween or anything. It, well, we'd have to find out if the Legion can accommodate us. Correct. Obviously. Friday was Saturday. Mm -hmm. And now we're there. Everybody's got the opportunity to show up that wants to show up for the meeting. And it's not Halloween. Do you mean in two days or, in the, fall, or the following Friday? Next week. Next Friday. Next Friday. What about a Saturday morning? A lot of hearings have done on sessions, well, deliberative sessions have done on Saturday morning. It's more so than a, a Friday night. Friday night's dump run and laundry. <laughs> Yeah, I sit here, but I, I can change my schedule on. I don't care. Saturday morning, Saturday night, I don't I, care. I think an evening meeting would probably be the best. Um, I would have to find out if the facilities are available at the Legion because they do a lot of Friday night, Saturday night stuff. So we'd have to check with them. Well, there's this building and there's the library, and it's not just the Legion. Could I, may, can I ask? I'm going to ask a parent what, what is a because I'm not a parent. What is a, I mean, if there were going to be an information session, that's, that's Yeah, that's uh, I would say a weeknight would probably be the best, for sure. And, and gen not. generally, a Wednesday night would be a wonderful night to have it, for sure. Well, but but this, this particular Wednesday happens to be a really poor night to have it. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, a Thursday night or the Tuesday night or, you know, I mean, a Friday night is tough because if you're going away, you might be going away. I mean, Thursday. but uh, again, not for me. Not about Thursday, the 31st of October. Well, let's get back to this This group here is to say whether or not we're going to sign the increase in the budget or not, not deciding what your meeting night is. We gave our opinions well, about, I, I what, about the meeting night. But Anybody got any major objections to October 31st, which is Thursday? Which is what? A Thursday. A Thursday. I'm fine. Well, okay. What was the hell in there? That's the 30th. Sure. That's the Thursday. Thursday on the 30th. Yeah. Can I ask a hypothetical? What if you don't hear back from the DRA uh, until next, until middle of November? They're denied. They're or approved it fairly really close. Pardon? They're either going to approve it fairly quickly or they're going to deny it. How do you know they're going to approve it fairly quickly or then deny it? We have been talking to the top honcho at DRA. So you have had conversations with them. Mm -hmm. I've had conversations with them about the general con the general idea of how do you do this. And you asked them how long it would take to get it approved. They said they will pay attention to it as soon as they see it. This now is that a may really mean, busy time and I'll put them. it on the bottom of my pile yeah. and work my way down to it. Yeah, I know. It, it took a while for us to, I can't remember how long, but it did take us a while for us to end. We couldn't spend it right away because we were in a different situation, but we had to spend down our operating budget before we could right. mm -hmm. use any additional funds from, from balance. Well, are people uh, ready to uh, vote on this, do they think, if we have a conversation? Okay, just to follow up on something that Denise brought up on the financial side. So, are we signing to say that 106... 107 is just for this purpose? Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. So there. Well, you, you're you no. allowing us to expand our authorized budget by that number. And you put, there's no constraints around what you can spend it on. You have my personal word. I uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But legally, no. There, there's no. Right. It's right. just, it just, will we Does agree to have them increase their operating okay. budget by this amount? Yes. And then the contingency of it's not going to be 106, mm -hmm. it's going to be 200 because of unknown things that happen. What happens then if that, if that occurs? If we sign a contract, it's going to be within the Okay, so that's, that's, that oh, yeah. okay. So that's it's contractual, these numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. until something happens. Guess what? That's their problem. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, not well, everything is going to be their problem. With that. But, but let's say it does, it, it's unforeseen, and, you know, like even if you're doing stuff on your house, you can say, yeah, I understand you didn't, you couldn't possibly have seen that. What is the process? 
is if it does if it's really going to be 130. What happens to have to come back and say, and there'll be another there'll be another discussion, DRA and rate in the thing to the rate payers isn't right. going to be 194, it's going to be 210 or something like that. Right. Okay. Correct. So are does the committee feel that they've heard it sufficient to to warrant a voting on this? If so, then I will look for somebody to move that we I guess that we accept the I don't know how to phrase accept the request for emergency expenditures put forward by the uh, water and sewer district. I'll move it. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second it. All right. Uh, are there any further questions or comments? I have a question. Is it possible, and this I guess would because I didn't make the motion, it would have to be an amendment. Can we attach some sort of contingency that is related to a hearing on the next week, the hearing on the 31st? Mm -hmm. Contingent upon? I don't, I mean, we can, you could say that when you, I call you for your roll call vote, but I don't believe so. I, I think our role is to go up or down. Just go but, once or two. But certainly, you can voice whatever opinion you would like as, as we as we go around the room. And we're going to do a roll, roll call vote because it just seems to be the best thing to do. Does that seem okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I I don't think a uh, yeah. yeah I don't I don't think we can put any. We have no authority to constrain how they manage their budget. Mm -hmm. All we're saying is, uh, you know, that they we're Sorry. giving them either this approval or not. Yeah, and we voiced our concerns, so we were loud and clear, right? And so uh, I think that's the best that we can do. I'll, I'll, Actually, the vote would be. I know it's there, but I think people right. should. I, I think we should hear publicly okay. what people okay. are going to vote, okay. and then and then we can and then the signatures will, will follow that. Yeah. Just sign this document. Yes, we do. Whether or not we are 100% behind no, all of the only no, if you agree. Yeah. Only yeah. if you agree. So if you say yes, then I would expect that you would sign, sign that. If you say no, you do not need to sign that. And these rate payers, just to be clear, they have not been notified that there may be an mm -hmm. increase. Yeah. At previous meetings, we have discussed how it would work. Okay. Right. And, and not been but you haven't done, done a percent. broadcast to all of the members, no. no. so you would need to have been at the Right. All right. I think I'm ready to call a vote unless there are other questions or comments. I'll go around the table this way. Yes. Yes. Do you want to pass? No. Back to you. Uh, you're not conducting this meeting for me. Oh, I know. Right. So please. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. Was anybody counting? I was well, well, Brianna, I hope was taking. <laughs> I have six yeses. And four no's. All right. So those of us who said yes can. One. How many budget oh, committees? Well, well I don't think I don't think we, we have one. We need one more. Don't so. we need seven? Don't we need seven votes? There's twelve votes? members. It's eleven. There are twelve. Yeah, but there are twelve members of the budget committee. I believe we need a majority to sign this document. There's only ten. We don't have one. There's no quorum. There's a quorum, but this is a little different. We need to have just like on when we do the budget in the March, we need to have. We need to have a majority of the budget committee, not of who's here. It's who's here. So, given that, I don't believe we have, we don't have seven votes. Ten here tonight. Six. Yeah. So we have Angela decide yes or no. She's already done her vote. She's already done her vote. That's you know. So, what is the total amount of votes that you have? You have nine. Okay. Ten abstain. Well, include that includes the abstain. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So did it fail? Yes. I think it failed. You need okay. seven signatures on that piece of paper, and there are only six. When is the next time we're this? We're, we're meeting soon. We're going to talk about that next. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> meeting on trick or treat day for. Yes. The week after. Wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. Hello. 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 We're still meeting. We're still meeting. Sorry. As far as I'm concerned, 
My extension is not enough. My extension is I need more information before I can make a decision. If we're meeting again on November 6th, can we look at this again at that time after that hearing? It's too late for that. Okay. Well, we well, had, but it's, it would be too late for them. The longer they wait, the longer. See, that's what, it's a rush job. The longer they wait, the less likely they're going to be able to do it. But, yeah, but it can be part of an ongoing discussion, which is probably would, would have been a good thing for us to have. I mean, this has to be done. Wait a minute. Today, tomorrow, or a year from now. For March. For March. That should be done. Yeah. Correct, but now they're doing more now. I get it. I get it. You know. I'm just saying, it's, yeah. it, from my perspective, these people have been paying good rates and they don't have access to clean water. And it's not their fault. We've had our vote. I, 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 no, I'm not. I get it. I'm not. I get it. Yeah. Just, just saying. It's a frustrating situation, I think, all the way around. Well, if we had everybody here, then it mm -mm. might still not. It was unfortunate. Yeah, but it might still not have passed. It might not have passed. So. All right. So, so I'm sorry, but that's the way. It, that's the way the meeting is. And I'm going to go on to the next item on the agenda, which is, I think, our schedule. And uh, this is what I found on our drive, on the town drive. And so what we decided, uh, Amal, I'm going to ask you to refresh me. What we decided last week is the school district is not going to be on the 4th. It's going to be on the 11th. Yes. Okay, so 12-11. So, uh, and then we will use the 4th for the first of our sessions to talk about uh, meeting to finalize the operating budget, and then we'll just continue it on the 18th. Now, right, so the other thing we need to do is uh, insert the transfer station into this plan, uh, because it's not here. And when I was looking at it and noticed that, I wondered if, uh, you know, uh, actually the, the 13th, unless the Water and Sewer District might have a long... Uh, Presentation. Reckon, yeah, right. Reckon town. The well, town is, you know, is yours, but yeah, yeah. What would you, I mean, what I don't think his is going to be very I don't long. Think the transfer station would be too bad. I don't think it's going to be too long. So Even the, the six might be, you know, be the first one on the agenda because cemetery is five minutes. Police and fire, based on what I've seen, isn't going to be a long conversation. Uh, I will either. defer to you. You're Let's the, put the town hall on the. I mean, uh, the transfer station on the six. And you think we'll be able to get their their budgets before that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And if, just, can we make him first? So then, because the other one's a little late. Like, uh, I don't know why. Okay. Well, I'm saying yes. I'm not going to chair. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll send John and yeah. know. Okay. Uh, was there anything else on this schedule? Um, it, this is where we had um, the public hearing for the school on the 11th, and you said of January. February. Is that, is no, it's January, January 11th. Not the deliberative session. It was the public hearing I thought you wanted to change to January 4th. I don't know. I, I, I may have made a mistake saying that the deliberative session should be on February 4th, which I believe it's scheduled for the 11th on there. Is that uh, February 4th? I, I do have it on. That was the time. It's on February 1st. It's February 1st. First with the snow, first with the snow date of the 4th. Yeah. Okay, so the 1st is a Saturday. That's what I'm telling you is that's wrong. A snow okay. date. So it should be the 4th for the snow day of the 7th. The 4th is a Tuesday evening. We did it on a Tuesday evening last year. Yeah. And it worked out really nicely. And the snow date again? It would be this. Oh. What? Mm -hmm. This is February? This is Saturday, so maybe the 8th. I'm sorry. Well, the 8th is the town's deliberative session. Let me look. I say, so you're saying the school deliberative session is um, the 4th. Can you can you do it that Thursday? If, if the, is the 4th a Tuesday? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you can we say Thursday? Let me just the 6th. Look, hold on. I just have to find my... <coughs> so, um, pardon me. No. Not the 1st. Part no deliberative session on the first. That's correct. That's that's so the only thing we've done. So, well, we've done two things so far. We've clarified that the uh, budget committee, that the public hearing, the budget committee's public hearing in the school district is January 11th. Okay. Last week there was some thought of changing that date. It is January 11th. Okay. Yes, I just mistook the 
date of the deliberative session. Deliberative yeah. session for the okay, so, so is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. If you had a schedule that had January 11th for the our public hearing on the school district operating okay. budget, that is still the 11th. We're not changing that to yeah. the 4th. But what we're looking at now is the deliberative session for the school, which on this schedule I have as happening on the 1st with a snow date of the 4th. We've just crossed out the 1st. So it's going to be on the 4th, and now we're looking for an appropriate snow day. Yep, we need to put a new one because in the um, schedule that Katie gave us last week, um, it does have the snow date on the 8th. So I will... Can we tentatively say the 6th? Yep. Tuesday, Thursday? Thank you. Is there anything else in this schedule that um, doesn't look... Okay, what time is it scheduled for? 6.30. 6.30? 6 o'clock on our schedule. Oh, 6 o'clock? Yep, oh, okay, yep. Okay, so that's a difference those. too, 6 o'clock. Okay, and they're at the school. Yes. All right, and the town's delivery session, however, the first one is scheduled for the 8th. Of February? Yeah, what time, what, what yes. day is that? Saturday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's not 6.30 then, right? No, that would be right. So, no, 9 a.m. Like yeah, yeah, probably. Well, that's usually February, 9 a.m. And the 11th can't be 9 a.m. Right, so... so it's yeah. just juxtaposed. Yes. So the 8th is 9 a.m., and that's a Saturday. And then the snow date is the 11th. Which would be this... Uh, a Tuesday, six thirty, like, what, like a six thirty okay, or so six. Okay, so snow day is a snow day different. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will be at the budget session is scheduled right now. Yeah. Just be scheduled to. Oh, oh, yeah. All right, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, everybody. Before we, I know we want to go. Angela, what was your question? You had the deliberative session on the fourth. So for date of the sixth school board. School. No. Yes. 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 Sorry. yes. yes. And the eleventh, you had just said, is the school. Budget session. No, town oh, deliberative town session. Town. That's the that's the um, snow day. The eleventh. The snow day. The, the deliberative session is the eighth. The, the first scheduled one is the, is Saturday the eighth at nine. You're going to send. I'm going to send this out. I'm going to send this out. I'm going to send, send out a link. Did everybody was everybody able to use the link? Yeah. 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 You so can't I'll, print off of it though. Yeah, you, you can download it in print, or you can. The, I you mean the Excel spreadsheet? No, the this. No, I mean, if you want a printed copy, well, you, you could download it. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> you, I got. I got some prefer, of the stuff. But would you but, prefer that I send it as an attachment in an email? Send it whatever way you want. I, I don't have to. It's a technology it. challenge. To look at. I, I usually don't have a problem, but I had a problem with the agenda. That was the cool That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll send it yeah, as an so attachment. Um, no worries. But it, and I'll send you the link, too, for people who just want to go to the drive. Try it. You can go to it. I don't have a subscription to Google Docs or something. Any other? Sold to them. That's the issue. Any other business? Don't get it. I have a question. Can we get our budgets on a Friday? Yeah. Yes. Can we do that? Yes. Yeah. 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 For the fire, well, the police cemetery. We can well, request. Denise isn't out five nights a week, maybe. So I Are think that uh, I, I apologize <laughs> for the CIP. It was a they were ready to go last week, but it took us a while to get the process in place. It is an improvement to get them any time ahead of time before we would just come. So I fully support it. That's the that's the way to go. So we will we will encourage the town and the school and all of us to get them to us. Used to be that way. Well, I don't know what We're doing our best. That's all I can say. So, um, all right. So as soon as you know, I'm sure John will send them out as soon as he gets them from the town the school. Understood that it's good to get them as soon as possible. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. I have a well, I'm going to say that uh, Charlie was the first, you were the second. All those in favor, aye. 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 aye.